What's going on, everybody? It's Captain Robert and crew, and it's Meteorian Core episode 30. We're finally here. Woo. Oof. Hey, people. Oof, it's right. three. I will remind those of you who have not seen Man with the Diamond Eyes, which at this point you absolutely should. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It feels unnecessarily too wrong. Oh, we have returned mm. and it, as it was Harold before us <laughs> in a discord announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, bitches. We're here. <laughs> I completely forgot about this Surprise, game and Alex. my muscle memory just brought me to I opened these websites and just sat here. Mm -hmm. Just a complete robotic. <laughs> yeah. You definitely know what Nelson's been doing yeah. for two weeks. Had that planned. <laughs> definitely didn't empire. procrastinate in the last mm -hmm. few minutes. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> you would never do that, Glam. <laughs> Are you trying to marry? Are you trying to call me? Out <laughs> no, I would never. <laughs> if I maybe, were, it would sound like, true. why aren't you wearing pants, <laughs> Nelson? <laughs> true. Keeping the vest, the party vest. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> from over yonder it the came. The best stays on. <sighs> the schedule post. Chat, chat has a great question. What did happen to Mitsu? Do you remember what happened to his character? <laughs> yeah, he just disappeared. disappeared. Mitsu bamped in real life and had to be conjured back, okay? Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't yeah, have to summon him with scarves. With hats. To no, this no. day, I haven't even asked him what happened when he just like, ah, fuck this turn order, I'm out. <laughs> Mitsu, Mitsu's actually been in this game the entire time. He's just been constantly casting invisibility. <laughs> the oh, over I back to it. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, after we were oh, like. We all put on hats. We're picking yeah, him. We like, no, I don't want to be a part of No, it was scarves. Yeah, we put scarves. on scarves to conjure him back. Guy. Yeah. yeah. But, but like what happened to his character at the end? Because he got the killing mm -hmm. blow on. on yeah. Uh, he magic yeah. missile to darkness. It was great. Yeah. In this multiverse, there's no way of telling where his character's at. We're going to have to hear it from his mouth. Hmm. He, he, so he, just tag just, him right now in a massive thread. Game. He walked off. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? What, what was his character's name? Star oh, Child. Just, that's a great question. Let's remember. With a why? I can, I, can, I can figure this out. That's a great I can figure question. this out. His character. I apologize for not uh, committing a one shot to a memory. Hendotonin. Yeah. Yes. What and was I did it? not commit it. Hendotonin. And I did not commit it to memory. I just went to the fucking D and T Beyond <laughs> where it's got red. You know, that's yeah, a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. I it's thought all the characters. I thought when you said his name that I would like it would refresh my memory, but I. Remember I don't that, remember like that name zero. at all. Zero, no. like his name, zero percent. We, in character, uh, called him Hendo. He just said that was easier. Hendo. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. We called him Hendo. Okay. Yes. That would be why. I was like, dude, I don't. Man, that was like that was foggy for me as well. I'm like, ah, the shortening. I remember even less after you say the name. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had memories, and then I and then they got erased yeah. somehow. It turns out they weren't real. Idea. I was just making yeah, stuff up at this point. <laughs> I, That's how we got a party to last time. <laughs> just making stuff up. It reminds me. Best. That I had a raid team for a day one at one point, and somebody sat there and thought they understood the encounter perfectly, and he explained it in the most long and convoluted way. And he was like, "You guys get it right," and everyone was like. No, no. And so one person speaks up after everyone's done. He's like, Marty, I I thought I understood it, and now I don't. <laughs> oh, man. It's been reversed. Poor Marty. Oh. Marty's such a lovely name. I like that. He's a lovely bloke, too. He's a lovely Icelandic gentleman. Yeah. I've been there. I've been there before. <laughs> Who's got big announcements they want to let the community know about this week? D20 death matches this Sunday. It's going to be really good. We've got a DM battle 2v2 and it's going to be a gauntlet fight this time. So we're changing things up a little bit. So that'll be DM Dag and Robert Hartley against Mindari and DM Dave. Did I get all that right, my cat? Yes, that's uh, that is correct. That by, is correct. Thank you. by gauntlet match, does that mean yes. the first round you were slapping each other with gauntlets? Or it's a it's a it symmetrical a race. race. Oh yes, 
Yes. With We've had one last each season, stage. but this, this is the first time we're doing a 2v2. Mm-hmm. So it'll mm -hmm. definitely go smoothly and exactly as planned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Always. So. It will be super balanced, I'm sure. Yes. I never really thought about DM de uh, or, uh, D20 death matches uh, evolving as kind of like the physical challenges on Survivor as they go. <laughs> That's essentially yes. what this is. It's, it's a Survivor yes. game or, you know, I like to think of it as American Gladiators, but... <laughs> he Far superior. Mm -hmm. We also have new shirts out. We have a little cassette tape that says Bard's Best Hits. A little Owlin, which I didn't realize they're called Owlins and not Alkins. Yeah, they they, they, they did. They changed it. Yeah. I, okay. It's not even Owlkin, it's Owl Folk, according to my archived character sheet note, but... The current update for the race class that isn't outdated is called Owlins now. Mm. When... I, you know what? I have a, I have a, I'm filing a grievance against Bad Guys LLC right now. I'm sorry. No, this you put out, you put out a million other shirts. I want the D20 Deathmatch shirt. It's, a, it's in there. It's been there. Yeah, since it's day in one. there. No, every time I've ever asked, you go, no, it's not in there. No, bro, it's been there since day one. That was the first one we uploaded. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, re I remove your own Twitch.tv. I remove my own personal grievance. <laughs> it's in there. It's like the only thing I've ever wanted was the original. Oh my god. Guys, go to. I'll put one with a kitty cat. Drop the Discord for you. Drop, drop the merch link right now. And can someone drop yeah, the damn that. merch link in chat? My cat can do it. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get back. To can we get special if you ones look if at it and you go to categories, like, there's D20 deathmatch. Contestant on the back or something. <laughs> Contestant. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You're gonna have this moment where you're gonna go to the link later and it's gonna be removed, and then you realize the long yeah. con of every time you've gone to check, Mud has surreptitiously removed the link, and you've been looking this whole time, and it's just slowly been driving you crazy. I have an yeah. algorithm that checks the username of the person uh, viewing the site, and then you know, uh, changing the the items based on that. Yeah, he has fixed. It took prices, me six weeks though. to code, but I did it. There was like a, two or three shirts that were listed as fifty-eight dollars. Oh shit! <laughs> Actually, there's a shirt listed as sixty-one dollars right now. That you say that. Can you update that? Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> God damn it's it! It's exclusive. Every time. Mm -hmm. It's not even me. It's it's them. They they fuck it up sometimes. Yep, that has to be it. That has to be it. <laughs> also, you need over, to you're store not, code. <laughs> you don't have a game tonight, right? No, I don't. Okay, well, then you all are welcome to come hang out with me as I'm actually doing the Destiny story tonight to try to keep up. Hey! Yeah, kick some buys. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Don't be pirates. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. I have a pirate it's hat. So fun. I will yeah, be wearing dude. it. <laughs> it's, it's been super fun because everybody's been playing, too. It's been fun to play yeah. Yeah. like actual yeah. Destiny with other people the way it's intended and not just in it. by yeah. myself doing some bounties. Well, oh, don't know. even say by yourself. I was still playing it and you weren't. I occasionally put loss out and you don't, you never answered. Mudcat also just what? came back to Destiny. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't give me that. The only other person who here has been as dedicated to Destiny is Bife. He's barely close to me though. Let's be he honest. He knows to nothing Destiny to Destiny week. compared I, to me. I, I, look, listen, <laughs> I, I, I worship at the shrine of your knowledge there, Caustic. I don't know. Well, like, blasphemy. It's a, it's a fearsome reputation yeah. at that point. Well, I just came back to Destiny and I've already 100-ed my battle pass. So, <laughs> nice. Hmm. I you have the inventory to so prove weird. it. <laughs> and I've been raiding thanks to people like Bife. It's been awesome. Yeah. I still Dude, haven't gotten to do a raid. Can never get a never get a squad together. Oh, well, we're gonna get you one, baby. We're gonna get you a raid. We'll get we'll get that yeah. shit done. Let he's, me know because y'all, there's a reason why no one raids with Mudcat. You should take that. Why? As a because hint. I because I finish the raid every time. <laughs> don't attack me like that. I will finish the raid eventually. I've started it multiple times. I don't I'll finish start it a raid eventually. and then give up halfway through. That's not my L style. Listen, we didn't get halfway the first time. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even get to the. You didn't even get to the war priest. <laughs> Bad guys Look, counseling listen. LLC. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say though that motherfucker. Oh my god, Jesus fucking Christ! Let me tell you how glad I am. We don't have to do that day one style. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Hard pass. <laughs> that is six hours of my life. I am never getting back. <laughs> Anybody else with big announcements they want to let the community know about? Do you do you want to talk about it or do you want me to talk about it? 
You go for it. This Tuesday, episode one. Woo! Our Lord of the Rings game. It is going to be DM'd by that majestic captain over there. I think I'm pointing the right way. Yes, I am. Hell yeah. Uh, I will be playing a mountain dwarf named Glunt. <laughs> Um, have I ever told you how fucking much I love you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Glunt the gone. Dwarf uh, is an art, uh, artificer. It's going to yeah. be awesome. It's going to be cool. It's going to be a battlesmith. It's going to be a great time. We've got an awesome cast of people, including some of the uh, staff at Rare Drop. Um, so uh, it's going to be rad. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we are actually going to be following along with the show. So, you know, events in the show will be in our world as we play the game. So it's going to be very cool. Uh, if you're enjoying Rings of Power like I am, make sure you tune in. Hell yeah. And I, I appreciate everyone for uh, uh, their wonderful patience as our timeline got pushed just a little bit as we had a, uh, uh, a death in my family over the course of the week, which postponed us from going live this past Tuesday to the next. So I promise you the extra polish will be worth it. We're going to have five episodes within that world. So a full on mini series. Come and watch us with some newbies at the table and enjoy immerse yourself in the world go watch it's great i'll be doing so at the end of the evening tonight though our times move it's not nearly as nice now it like drops at like very beginning of like friday right it's like midnight everywhere which is unfortunate oh, oh yeah i think so late dwellers i haven't even looked i've been trying not to think about it because i just will just stop non-stop thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> 20 years I that's all i'm gonna say lord of the rings for hours so <laughs> anybody else well like i said no call the nether deep tonight uh because i've uh family stuff and visitation tomorrow so i'll be cutting off early so no double feature we do get this episode of dnd in and then on sunday we're before d20 deathmatch if you want to see some of the mods all play in their commission game and spell jammer watch them and then uh, roll over to d20 deathmatch mm. all right picking up where we left off two weeks ago finishing off the encounter with a Jin's name that you still do not know locked into combat in the fiery Arbor District of Waterdeep. That gin offered up a wish. It's an olive branch to remove themselves from the situation. Unfortunately, the rest of the party, unable to stop Toph, quick wit and an even quicker tongue. Our favorite bunny offered up a party of all parties as you were transported into a pocket dimension to a version of Beth's Velvet Grundle, a nightclub on the rise somewhere far below the ocean. However, between space clowns and a dance that you seem to never be able to break, you guys were able to fend off the malevolent features of the party shake that electric slide finish the beholder and re-emerge back into water deep proper with the gin long gone and only the ashes of the district left lucius handing off a token from the silver hand to the party in case they need him or his associations good deeds we pick up an entire week later. I'm going to have everyone roll a wonderful D20. Lowest roll is going to start first and talk about a piece of their time. You don't have to go through the whole time. We're going to go round robin. We're going to do a half a week at a time. I was going to say, my, uh, my, my laundry list is... Oof. Oh wow! My laundry list is coming right up. <laughs> well, get that not one in a good way, I guess. Yeah, you know what? This is 
honestly the best nat one I think I've ever won. It's a D one hundred. Wait, so what are we doing? Uh, D twenty. I meant to say I meant to say D twenty. I probably okay. said D one hundred. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, I meant what are we doing? Like this is this, this is letting uh, this is going to give us the order that we start talking about everyone's R and R time. Oh, okay, okay. So after dispersing from the arbor, obviously free of any repercussions, cleared by the silver hand, knowing that there is some level of malevolence floating within the city, but no imminent threat. Sanrin, your first free day in a long, long time. So, Xanrin has, at this moment in time, had a pretty clear purpose in mind, but also with the sudden dump of everything that has happened with Draxis, there has been this sort of immediate appearance of this cosmic burden upon the entire group. I think the first thing on the very first night is just go up to a rooftop somewhere and contemplate everything that Draxis spoke of, the new foes that we might need to face, and the fact that we have this now well-established committee of heroes that is come together and now has a greater purpose at hand. And, you know, with all of that, you know, a tune or two is going to come to mind. He's going to sit there and think of a song here or there. Um, and that's only realistically the first night, though, because following on from that, there's a flurry of activity. He's been given a seal, which means access. And with access in mind, there's all sorts of things to do. The first things are practical, and the second things are, you know, more whimsical. And amongst those initial practical things is most definitely doing something with the Storm Ore. So going to some of the master crafters of Waterdeep and going to the center of the district, Xanrin's actually going to get some of that ore cast into a new mechanism that's fitted into his dark iron hand. And that's going to be a new piece that will uh, be revealed in time. But it's something which will hopefully help in a few situations where uh, certain things on battlefields need controlling. There's also the issue, of course, of everything that is now both his and Reggie's quest. And that is the quest to find a way to check and see what's happened to his twin. And so this is realistically what takes up the next few days of Xanrin's time. Over those few days of the week, he's using that Inquisitor's seal to gain knowledge, to reinforce what he knows about everything that is relevant. First of all, about the Shadowfell, and how to cross into it, and where they can find different crossings, and other details about the crossings that he may or may not already know about. And also, to search for information on two other things. First of all, the nature of psionics generally, and to try and understand better the power that he's grown up with and has slowly developed over his life, which has very much dramatically changed since he went down into the Yawning Portal. And then, finally, something that he failed to find was any further information he could on his family. And the reason for that is because there is a certain degree to which there's a lot that Xanrin does not know. And with his family in mind, it's something where he wondered if there was maybe inklings or rumors or legends of owl folk with these psionic abilities, and he has found nothing in the libraries of Waterdeep, thus proving that the secrets of his family are perhaps something that only they can reveal to him in time. Xanrin. On one of these particular evenings where you and Reggie have pondered the hard questions, I would like to pick up in a scene somewhere on that rooftop. Weapons long laid down, but still a feeling of unease. Reggie's armor is still on, really hasn't known any different a new entity that lives in a world doesn't own any possessions 
trying to figure out bits and pieces of culture. You know, uh, Zandrin, I, I don't really uh, understand this whole order process, but uh, I would uh, I would like some more food, please. Tell you what, we'll uh, we'll look. I'll teach you two things at once because the order process is only half the game. You understand? You also have to wait. You know, someone on the other end has got to make things. You, we you can probably you, get them. You don't just take the first thing that comes by. No, no, not at all. You uh, you choose what you want, and uh, unless you are uh, down on your luck, you you make sure you pay for it. Lord, Lord uh. knows we can afford to now. It wasn't always that way. I know that. Kalaya and I had our moments in Riften where we had to steal to make buy. There's no shame in that, by the way. But stealing? It's a... Stealing? Ah, possession. If something belongs to someone else, generally speaking, it's taboo to take it. That's why um, the skills that I was taught by several fellows up in Riften. I've been saying... Retcon out of character. I've been saying Riften. I don't know why I've been saying that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember Luskin. There we go. Luskin. Damn. Every that, time, insert Luskin. My apologies. In our King's Fall raid the other day, you named all the positions as, <laughs> as cities in Skyrim. Oh my God, it <laughs> is. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my whoa, God. whoa, 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 whoa! Wow. <laughs> Glam, that's Patreon content. <laughs> There's Look, people man, who pay for that. It was that or the geographic call-outs, you know, using Maine, <laughs> California, Florida, yeah, yeah. and Washington. Oh, for Oryx the, for is Florida, this. man! The yeah. National treasure that must be protected. Yeah. Yeah. Washington, Washington, D.C. Washington, <laughs> state of Washington. Reggie does not correct you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> Fellows up in uh, Luskin taught me the way, but generally speaking, if it belongs to someone else, it's, or is in their possession of the time being, it's not okay for you to take it. I mean, context. Imagine if someone took your axe. What? How'd you feel? I would, I would, I would smash something over their head. Exactly. And take it back. Uh, yeah, context. <laughs> it's very important, it matters. Combat is these, so uh, much easier than culture. It is. It's, uh... It's one of the joys that I think you'll eventually find for it, though. When you understand everything a little bit differently, you can learn to appreciate the differences. It's hard sometimes. I know that there's definitely places which are rough around the edges enough where it can seem like it's impossible to find them, but, you know, even in those places, there's good people who have different ways of doing things, and understanding those is part of the joy of it all. But for the moment, let me let me teach you these basics, okay? So, you have... I'm just gonna grab, like, a pocket full of whatever spare loose coin I have. You've got these, right? Coin. And all of them with different currency value. Okay, so the bronze, these ones. Let's say <clears throat> each of these is worth ten of these. I'm holding up a silver piece, explaining the basics of how currency works and the exchange of goods and services, you know. As if to someone who's done it for the first time. So, oh. all of, yeah, all of that, that's how you would order food in the first place. You'd see what you want from the establishment. They'd have a list. It's called a menu most of the time. Or you could just ask the barkeep what's good. And then you'll say, yeah, I'd, I'd like this. And then they'll go and prepare it for you. But you need to pay for it. You understand? Oh. I'm going to put this distinction out there for you because this is all this is all stuff from the perspective of <sighs> us who we we have money now. But I I I want to I want to make it real clear. There's I I don't think there should be any shame in stealing if you have no money and you are stealing for food. That needs to be made very clear. And I'm 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 very much putting that in you right now. It's not how a city guard would see it, but I don't care. I Fuck those guys. <sighs> I think I still have a lot to read. 
as he stares down as his list of books that you have. It's like the best of the best. It's like 1984, Animal Farm, like everything a man needs to know about becoming a gentleman, like The Prince by Machiavellian, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, The Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Like it's all stacked. It's listed under that section in the library saying, books we pretend we've read. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely that here's the other thing Re Reggie when you order what? food they, they need to make it you know it, it can't be a stew just out of nowhere stew doesn't grow on a tree it you doesn't. need to get the ingredients and put it together right oh yeah 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 so uh, while that's happening cooked food you have is to wait good like yeah, really is good, good. I, I never amazing. never never really took the time you know Perhaps I can imagine, but while waiting for good food, which does take time, because something that's good will often take time, you can pass the time doing whatever, you know? Most of the time we make sure that no one's getting into trouble and make sure uh, that everyone's okay and can talk amongst ourselves, but I want to teach you something else. Have you ever... Hold on. Have you ever... Hold on. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's, it's a lot. Uh... How about we? How about I teach you something simple then? Do you remember your numbers? Yeah. You can count up to six still, right? I'm gonna have to roll for that. <laughs> I really hope he succeeds this roll. <laughs> Poor ducky. <laughs> Let me uh, pull that character sheet up real quick. Uh... <laughs> Is <laughs> Reggie's intelligence? Oh God! Probably a negative one. Not very high. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Re Reggie, do smash. Uh... Well, it's gratuitous, I think, personally. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Um, it could be better. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, let's let's get this flat roll. Oh please. No. Oh God. No. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna go with the number five. I can only go up to the number five. Uh, one, two. Can I uh, spend a side three, eye to transfer the knowledge of number six to Reggie? Because four, I really wanted to. T I really wanted to teach him how to play um, five, ship captain crew. Five. <laughs> oh, he plays. He's just has trouble understanding the concept of six uh, oh. over the over the course <laughs> of you winning several times. <laughs> I probably cheated in a few. No, ways that's, too. That's, that's, that's isn't that five? That's five and one. So, uh, so, so, yeah, yeah, five and one. But five and one is called six. You know, so it's like, um, I, I assume I have five digits on my owl hand. I'm gonna hold those up. I'm gonna hold up the metal that's hand. And what, but it's that's five. Six. It's five and one. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It's five and one. Okay, so. Imagine for a second you had one more finger on your hand, Reggie. In fact, no, there's a better way of doing this. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to start putting out first my two short swords and then my psychic arms, and then I'm going to lay down four psychic blades as well as the two short swords. So you see how there's two and there's four here. There's another way of calling that. It's another number for three and three, too. When it is put together, it's bigger. That's called six. Uh, I'm starting to get a hang of it. Yeah, and it goes up. There's there's numbers for all of it. When you when when we get to this many, and I'm gonna hold up both hands. That's that's uh, almost what you need to know. That's almost all of the basics, and from there you can work most of it out. Okay. I think that's good for today. Yeah, we'll, we'll, he's we'll gonna wipe. He's he's visibly sweating. <laughs> like understands that like this this whole social situation of being in a tavern in the first place and like not attacking things, not being told what to do. Every moment of his life is a very interesting experience for him at the moment. As he kind of wipes his brow and and stares back at you, I kind of liked it. Talk about, you said the past. I'd kind of yeah, like to uh, talk about that. Well, I mean, you know, what, what do you want to know? I, 
And on that so point, we're going to cut that scene and go to the next. Hell yeah. <laughs> Where we got in the order here with the three. Jacob. Uh, Jacob, after assuming his new form, is going to, uh, going to spend some time testing the the limits of his new abilities uh and in doing so uh find a good outlet in tracking down any associates of uh bill shales to find out any information he can about <laughs> the the genie not necessarily bill but looking for for anybody who would <clears throat> know anything about him where he came from Let's, any odd behaviors let's do a three-part skill challenge with the uh, discerning amount of information going as three bits and pieces. So let's go with an investigation. On this very first roll, I'm gonna give you advantage based off of what you've been able to gather. You have that little bit of information of, there's obviously a component to these anti-gravity bombs that he was having you collect. Someone's interested in that. I'm going to let that have an initial lead. 20. 20. Departing and heading towards the very first pub that you guys walked into in town. Last time you've seen Bill Shale out of his own office going and gathering some names obviously shook patrons from what's happened down by the shore Bill Shale and others employed a lot of people within your strolls you've seen more folks out of work than were ever before the job postings have been slim and also the reconstruction on the bit of the arbor has been slow in the southern tip is it is obviously the most impoverished part and lower tier of the mercantile within it what comes in and out of the city i would uh <clears throat> hanging around that bar and other places i would i would uh now thinking about that and how everyone's out of work i would use uh, some of our considerable wealth to uh, to pay for information. You know, I assume with the amount of people that he employs that there <clears throat> would be people that at least, you know, have rumors or stories or saw strange things, heard things, overheard things. So what's it to you? What do you want to know about Bill? Everything there is. What do you know? <clears throat> I know I'm out of a fucking job. That's what I know. Well, maybe if you that wanna... I can help you with. He was a bit of an over-promise, under-deliver kind of guy. But, uh... He certainly wasn't short on work. Mm. Didn't mind taking the dirty tasks. What kind of dirty tasks? You know, the kind that sends you places you don't want to go. Underwater. Under mountain. Interact with folks that are... You don't want to be in the same room with. Gentlemen. Human commoner. Doesn't look like complete rags, but definitely... Or down leathers. Looks like a level two adventure seen some shit but definitely buzzed and not in the greatest place well let's just say what if I did want to get into a room with those people as I slide him some gold across the table oh yeah your funeral pal died before What? 
Never mind. What do you mean like a figure of speech or like That's exactly what I meant. <clears throat> like a figure of speech. Yeah. I'm gonna roll a wisdom saving throw. Figure of speech. <sighs> if you want to find out what the hell's been going on, check the unions. That's all I'm going to say. Nothing's been right ever since they went on strike. How long ago was that? About a month ago. They say they're not responsible. Every single one of these guilds has pull inside this city. And them and the masked lords, they don't see eye to eye at the moment. Things just keep burning. Well, let's put it this way. I don't expect him to stop burning anytime soon. And I didn't see nothing. I mean, I didn't see nothing. Yeah, well, <clears throat> you didn't see nothing today either, as he slides him a few more pieces of gold. <laughs> he looks and smiles over the bartender. Ah, oh, that'll start on your tab. Kind of looks back over at you. Got any more where that charity case is involved? Maybe I can uh, remember a little bit more. How much do you owe? And it's not even that bad. He's racked up about 12 gold. Oh. Mm. For 12 gold, maybe you could draw me a map as I'm gonna slide it. I'll slide 12 gold over to him. Roll a persuasion check. Hold on, I gotta pull my sheet out again here. Oh, that's not good. Oh, uh, wait, hold on. Oh, dang it. Snake oils don't work on persuasion, do they? Oh, yeah. No, they do. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's what they're there for. I thought they were just uh, only charismas. Okay. Burn that bad boy. Oh, 20 was there. 19. <clears throat> you want a map, bro? You want a map of one of these places? Map, right. name, you know, whatever you got. I don't get you a map. Start in the Forge District. Everything runs through them. Begins to sketch out part of the neighborhood in the district. Obviously, you're not going to get anything up in the front door. You're going to have to work through Pete in the back. He's in receiving. What's he look like? Big guy. Born on the front. Just one, not multiple like you. He's a big rhinoceros type, right? Big dude. Doesn't take shit from anybody. Has, has he got any vices? Yeah, he works too much. He's always there. Shit. Would have been better if you said hookers. <laughs> you, uh, offering? Uh, you got the gold. Oh, uh, come on, man. It's... Yeah. <laughs> I won't push my luck. You need to find a way to interact with Pete. Whether it's goods coming in, goods coming out. You gotta get on his good graces. Then you can get back to the meeting rooms. If you're not, you, I don't even know what I'm bothering to tell you this. You're not in union anyway. You're not, you won't last 10 minutes in there. This is, uh, 
This is worse. It's worse than the underworld. You can't even. You can't even do uh, bad deeds to get in there. There's. Uh, they have their own. Uh, they have their own process. They, can take, they take care of their own. It, it's ironclad in there, but. You better be bringing something that I want. That's all I can say. That's how I got there. Any idea what they might be interested in? Like always, they're a forge, man. They want materials. Oh. Can't run the forge without materials, right? I guess that makes sense. Guess I'll keep on the lookout for some materials then. Yeah. Better things that go boom. You know what I mean? Mm, I think I have a pretty good idea what you mean. I think I know where I can get some as well. Uh, another, another 10 gold. Now set me up. Or not. You just want me to give you 10 gold? For what? I gave you some pretty detailed information, all right? Did I gave you some pretty detailed gold already? Oh, man. I'm getting out of debt isn't that much fun. <sighs> Fine, I'll take five. You know what? Make it ten. But if I call, you answer. Persuasion check. <coughs> God damn it. You get advantage on snake, that. Snake oh, lost for now. For now. 17. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I don't feel like being found after this, all right? What do you think about that? Maybe been you don't through feel enough. Like making any more money. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Damn, this guy is down on his luck, bro. So deep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah, fuck you right I ain't no position I ain't no jobs coming up fine leave a post for me here I give you my name nobody's yeah. asking for it be safe to do the same Otherwise, you'll be a dead man. Mm. You leave a post here, I'll get back to it. A coin, then I got whispers. Fair what enough. else do you want to know about? What exactly happened down at the docks? What are they saying? They're saying that fucking Bill screwed the pooch. Brought in some shit he couldn't fucking handle. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Plausible yeah. deniability. I don't believe a fucking word. Bill, Bill, uh... Bill was full of shit, but he knew what he was doing. Been in business for a long time. I don't buy it. He didn't give a shit whether he's funneling stuff for the guilds, to the masked lords, like he'd be giving shit straight to the silver hand. He made money. He got us money. Uh, I don't buy him having an agenda other than a profit. It doesn't matter now. It's all gone. Two tears in the bucket, eh? Mm. Well, at least you have me now. As he does a big toothy grin. He, uh... I'm dead into a dragon. What a fucking life. Hmm. Maybe you tell your friends if they hear anything about Bill or anything down at the docks. They come my way. 
Okay. I'll keep my eyes and ears open. Another ale over here. Pardon. <laughs> As he orders it, Jacob's gonna get up and walk away from him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Gonna, gonna, gonna leave out into a, a rainy night, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Your trench coat. <laughs> yep. Full on mud count Malone. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next in our list? Nelson. 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 How did your downtime begin? Well, as Nelson steps out into the streets, leaving the group for the first time, he can't help but look around and see the bustle of the city and the people taking part in commerce and exchanging money for goods and services and the noises and the lights and the sounds and the giant buildings. And he can't help but reflect a little bit on how he may have got here. Mind's eye. <gasps> Ooh. Yes. We getting that Nelson law. Hell yeah, dude. Nelson can't help but think about the town that where he came from. It's a, it's a small village a Kenku village with high wooden walls, but they kind of like, all the walls kind of lean out like a, almost like a spiked nest, if you would, which is exactly what they called the town. They referred to it as the nest. And in the center of town, there's a statue that Nelson remembers extremely, extremely clearly. It is a statue of uh, Lord Pazuzu the dark angel of the four winds, who is the deity of this tribe of Kenku. Nelson is there below the statue embracing his nest mother, for it is his ninth birthday and as is Kenku tradition, the young are sent out into the wild to start their own nests, their own villages and set up their own homes to explore and spread Kenku across as far as they can. So he sets off with the other group of nine-year-olds as they go into the woods exploring. He keeps falling into reverie, kind of like not really understanding why this is necessary, why he needed to be separated from his home. He never really even understood that statue in the center of town. It was just kind of creepy and weird. And so as they walked, Nelson would kind of like fall to the back of the group, constantly falling into this kind of reverie and coming back and snapping back to attention until one time when he snaps back to attention and the party is gone. There's no one else. And he looks around, it's getting dark at night. He can't see them anywhere. He's calling their names. He starts to pick up his pace, picking directions, kind of at random, almost panicking, until he trips and falls, and the darkness just seems to descend. He can't see anything around him. He's alone. But then in the darkness, small little lights start to glow. The luminescence slowly starts to come up and it gets brighter and brighter. He can make the lights out in the shape of mushrooms and other types of fungus hanging from the trees and on the rocks as they start to glow stronger and stronger and stronger. And as they get brighter, a voice says, Don't worry, child. We have you now. Your mother is here. And as that brightness comes to full light, Nelson is back in the brightness of the city with the sun shining down, and he decides that he wants a taste of this mercantile capitalism. He's got a lot of money, and he wants to live the high life. <laughs> wow. We are going to get the most expensive room. We are going to find the most expensive room. <laughs> the bait and switch man <laughs> you spend that money yeah so nelson starts to go shop to shop 
you know, comparing prices. He doesn't really know how this works. So he's like, how much is that robe? Okay, and he goes to the next shop. How much is the robe? That's a bigger number. So let's keep going. So he just keeps looking until he kind of ends up in the, you know, the fancier part of, of Waterdeep. Roll an investigation check. Okay, cool. Nelson, cocaine and caviar. <laughs> how do how do birds snort oh, no, my, cocaine? It was, uh, uh, okay, it's like, it was, it's like a movie. <laughs> is it like plug in was down? I'm taking like, a screenshot and I'm sending yeah, it to you. Like... It is 15 plus five. Let me send it to you real quick. It was a 20. They like it's... penguin that shit. And I gotta turn the ad on. Did you just on. like throw? I believe it up you. In the I air. believe you. If you rolled, oh, yeah, a, you rolled a repository. A 20. A 20. An un 20. unnatural 20. Yes. <laughs> just like you. You are suddenly on Regent Street. <laughs> <laughs> and you have been for 18 days. Mm. Nelson, what would he you say? He's been to do this for a long time. He's not trying to seek out a lifestyle. He just wants to try it out. See oh, what it's all friend. about. With all that and money, the lifestyle is going to find you. <laughs> so we have wealth beyond anyone in this town's mental capacity we, we are so freaking rich so we're just gonna we're just gonna pop off what's the aesthetics of the robes that you're particularly looking for oh. well they're gonna be kind of look exactly like what i have and actually nelson's gonna be very disappointed if it doesn't look jacked so but <laughs> he knows it's got to be for a big number you know so it's kind of that fashion like brooklyn street fashion where you pay a thousand dollars for a white torn t-shirt you know what i mean oh kind of yes stuff. Isn't that like Kanye West stuff? Like right now it's in piles in stores. Like that's the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trendiest motherfucker in all water deep. Got that. Like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> all I can think about is now you being dressed as Chris Angel from the Mind Freak era. Yeah, kind of, kind of, Aww. sadly, kind of. Not, I'm not saying I, I think that, no, yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> Will there be as much blood? Nelson can definitely <laughs> create blood. <laughs> Nelson is, yeah. You know, it, it plays into your hand because really you need these garments to stretch a little bit. You're not exactly an off the rack kind of guy, but as you've right. gone into some of the higher institutions, it's required for you to really shop in some of the high elf sections is there some of the only people that share your tall slender genetics and did you come to mope yeah. around within these stores really standing out amongst you found one collection in particular that's finally that you're you're drawn to that you've seen that this this fits and it's as described as it is and there's a, there's a is a gentleman that looks very much like a uh, like a Warcraft blood elf type, you know, just straight rip. The emerald eyes are what's so piercing, and it's a uh, it's a lot of Hulkamania colors, very bright crimson and gold robes that they're wearing. It picks up your very emo dark set that's in front. We've had trouble with this particular collection, but it seems that uh, your aesthetic would match. Yeah, is it the most expensive? <laughs> it's the only standard. Mm, no. Okay. Let's just get to the most expensive then. We can certainly make this more expensive. Ah, well, show me the one that's really more expensive, though, <laughs> and then I'll decide. And maybe I'll pay you that for this one. Rule of persuasion check. <laughs> You'll pay more for it. I was waiting <laughs> for that insight what check. What do we care? What do we care? <laughs> oh! Oh my oh, god! I didn't link it back. It's eighteen. Dang. Okay, so you gotta it. you gotta click the uh, you might have to click the B up on your browser. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna go do all the clicks. I promise. Are you gonna get this tailored to you? Like, I'm just imagining ha That's a having you like in the one. window. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would assume that they have a tailoring service if this is the finest store. 
Can you imagine how terrifying that would be? Just Nelson getting his measurements in the window. Just like this T-posing, like, statue of a reaper. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Yeah. Funeral fashion, baby. Oh, yeah. Don't forget that Nelson is hideous and the way he He's... talks is disgusting and not cool to look at. So, you know, I can't imagine they're stoked to have him in the store. <laughs> Does he smell? Exactly how do you intend to pay for any of this, might I ask, sir, before we go any further? Not knowing the particulars, I think the answer is however you'd like. <laughs> oh no. His eyes get very large at this. <coughs> I would prefer to stick to currency, please. Name it. How much? Platinums. Sounds excellent. I mean, do we care? We don't care, right? We're rich as shit. Yeah, yeah we're rich as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. We proceed any further, I would be more comfortable if uh, you've shown us where some of this funding is. Uh, do, uh, do we all just have it on us? Yeah, you guys all have a uh, a, we have a, a sizable card. chunk. Is there a thing bigger than... Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Is there like a... Do we have like lines of credit or how does this... No, you work? don't. You just you guys have a huge <laughs> okay. illicit a dragon platinum. horde. <laughs> yeah, like, but I mean like how do we draw... Is there like a magic portal to the horde? Like I put my arm through or something? Like uh, is it... You no, know, like when you guys left, you you took like a uh, okay, cool. What what you would be is like okay, if I'm going on a month long bender in water deep, kind okay, of cool. <laughs> kind of sizable. Uh, so right. yeah, you have platinums. You have uh, what's one up from platinum? <laughs> there is no the, the, sapphire. <laughs> yeah, they, they were talking about what card naming. I think is it like sapphire water deep. <laughs> Waterdeep like crypto. My, Nelson has I no want to pay my bill in Boolean. Boolean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might be able to go with feet picks, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Only Nelsons? Would, for the sake of. <laughs> Only Nelsons <laughs> feet picks. You know, Only I would. Gloves? <laughs> I would say that uh, Nelson would probably. Like, you have the coinage. But like you pull out a priceless antiquity, like yeah, a small yeah. golden well, scarab. I wanted Thomas to kind of have it in his beak. I almost did the turkey and I forgot. He's tracking, boy. Oh my. <laughs> he can still, I think he still talks like he used to talk. Doesn't have a garbler anymore, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess he I guess he opens his mouth, it's like, my grill, my grill. <laughs> it's like, like father, like Thomas. <laughs> I mean, we both do mimic whatever we want. <laughs> In that case, please follow me to the private collection. And it takes you back to a piece that I can only describe uh, as I always go back to it as Gary Oldman's uh, <laughs> outfit in the fifth element. Yeah, very uh, avant-garde. It is laced with what looks like interwoven spell thread and crystals within its structure and an odd translucent collar that comes up over the side and sparkles. Not exactly your aesthetic, but is expensive. Nelson loves it. He wants it. He's going to take it. I want it. <clears throat> oh, are you sure? One of these? <laughs> and like at this point, there's like four handlers that have come over, and like there's small talk and discussion of like whether they're going to sell this designer piece. <sighs> Do you think we could um, possibly work in to the finer collections? It, we did just receive this, and while we would love to sell it to you, we'd like to have it in our 
possession for just a bit longer. I could pick it up tomorrow. We were thinking about a two week grace period. Um, <laughs> grace period? Yes. Um, hmm. And you can see like, we'll go ahead and roll an insight. Ooh, that they're being classists? <laughs> oh, God, look, if, if they refuse sales I'm mailing you, these rolls, you... I swear. I see it show, on, show up on D and D Beyond as a twenty-five. I don't know if yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, you need to make sure that your uh, your character sheet is in the same browser that it's Foundry is. It's the extension. I will fix it. I sent it to you on Discord. It's a twenty-five. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm fixing it. I promise. <laughs> twenty-five. You can obviously over here where they're like we're going to have to check this i don't believe this one bit Are you actually going to sell this to him you out of your mind it's from the collection so we could agree on two week grace period we Love to get you in your current aesthetic. It would be our honor to include it in the purchase as well. Did Did you say there was a collection? Is there more? Uh, of not in this particular collection, but there are collections of collections. Oh, so this is the only piece you have then? This is the most expensive piece that we have. Ah. Uh, not so... the only. How about one day and I pay double? <laughs> I swear I'm trying to find the extension. I don't know where it is. Have they brought you a, like a glass of champagne yet at this point? I mean, if, if, <laughs> if he doesn't get what he wants, he can always buy it at Drouchy and Gabbana. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one day, so we give us more than enough time to evaluate the funds I I I would advise yes selling fantastic here's what? a down payment uh, and I throw him a plat look at each <laughs> well then do as the man says please outfit him immediately to make sure that we need to take care of any alterations this can be done within the day as well as they begin to dress you in your best Gary Oldman fifth element Hell yes. This is great. <laughs> Nelson is uh, loving the treatment. He, um, you know, he kind of, I think he kind of can sense that spell thread in there. You know, he's usually not attracted to the fineries, but this seems to be, it feels like more to him. Roll an arcana check. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm linked now, by the way. This will be the maiden roll. Yes. Hey, I oh! see it. no! <laughs> it's not the maiden roll. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I, I, Nineteen is pretty high, but I, I, I'm not sure if it showed up on uh, on Foundry or not. <laughs> Wait, can I? Do I have something to re-roll that? Is there a card for that check? There's, there's luckies. There's inspirations. You, you can, uh, you yeah, know. yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna throw a big. I got a D8. I can put on it. Let me do that. Good plan. Well, let me do that. Here it comes. No! Only a two. He cries. <laughs> Fifteen. You do sense a strong sense of magic within this spell woven robes. And you begin to understand why you think it's so expensive. As you identify the first property of that robe, your AC is 10 plus your spell casting modifier. What? When wearing 16? these robes. So it's not the full 16, it's the whatever the, the modifier is. Oh, plus five which is less than my current. No, it's plus five 
plus your your magic items that are onto right, it. Right, 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 right. So it should be in. I think it's five from the deck. One from the deck bonus, so it'll be six. Plus on top three, of so it okay. should be an eight. Yeah. Because of your magic items, so this would put your AC at an eighteen. Let's go. But there's something else that lingers on these robes that you haven't quite identified yet. Mm. Oh. And that's where we'll cut to the next person. Ooh, damn. Who else is in line now? Me. It's me. I Toph did a time. Yes. I'm so excited. Toph has been enjoying this downtime. This is a city that he's completely unfamiliar with and he's not really a city rabbit. So it's been a whole new adventure. He wakes up at the crack of dawn every morning, never a complaint. Hops downstairs each is like every single morning. It's the same thing. By like the third day, they already know when to expect him and his veggie omelet is already made for him every single morning along with a glass of milk. He eats his veggie omelet, drinks his milk, and then he goes out to the park like immediately and practices swinging his sword a hundred times just so that way he has good practice. And then of course he swings because that's fun too. And while he does that and he's out on the park every day, he has the opportunity to people watch, which is important to him. He's trying to get the lay of the city and take in the buildings, the people, they interact. What are the rules in which they're interacting? What seems safe? What seems dangerous? And after he's finished swinging, he has this routine of picking one person who crossed his path that day to try to follow them a little bit. And he does his little sneaking where he follows very poorly behind, peeking around you know, different walls and corners, trying to shadow different individuals within their spaces, going as far as he can. Sometimes it's other children his age and he's followed long enough and got spotted to be invited to dinner for different families and to join them. And being the small little rabbit that he is, he's rather unassuming. And it's most likely that people aren't really threatened by his presence as they, as he follows around, or if anything, he's not even seen being less than like three feet in height. So he matches in with a lot of the dust roads that are here, or even the cobblestone ground that he blends in quite well. And he just enjoys following people, trying to figure out what each person is up to. What is the business going on in each of these spaces? And he'll occasionally pick someone who might be a little bit too dangerous, but he'll still follow through just because his curiosity always gets the best of him. And he's had to make a few escapes through sewers at this point, but fortunately being as small as he is, he hasn't had quite a problem with it, though to the disgust of many, he smells bad afterwards. And of course, with his routine, he always ends his day going by a little fruit pie shop owned by an owner called Mary Beth. And she pats him on the head and gives him the biggest little mini pie that she has for that day, giving him different fruits for him to try that he's never had before. And being a bigger city, they have a lot more imports of fruits. For him, he had just tried like a few berries at that most, like a few red berries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. But here he's experienced like peach for the first time and apricots, even pineapple, which actually didn't taste very good in a pie, but he ate it anyway sort of thing. And of course, spoiling his dinner, he would always eat it on his way back before eating. So that was his typical routine as he'd go in and out, just trying to learn the layout of the city, how the people functioned, if it was a good place, if it was a bad place. So that way he could be his own little guide there as he did with his mom when he was growing up in the forest. Every time they had to move to a new spot, you had to figure out what little creatures were there, what was safe, what was not where you could go, what was poisonous, what was not poisonous. And so he's used to doing this, but it's just much more in the public these days. And it's exciting for him. The entire time, of course, his mother is whispering in his ear, telling him to hide or not to do that or not to eat. But in his own spout of independence, he continues to do whatever he wants and feels rather brave in the process. Now, during this time, he also has his two puzzles that he's been playing with, the ones that he picked up from the dragon's nest. And 
every day before he goes to bed, he tries to open it. And he's been like spinning it a bit like a Rubik's cube or trying to press in any buttons. And it's not giving way whatsoever. Probably anyone who shares like a wall with him in the, the lodgings that they're staying at has probably heard him throw it against the wall quite a few times before he ended up going to sleep. Uh, maybe even at this point, we might say, um, you know, Xanrin probably has you know, heard, heard uh, Toph in his childlike cursing ways throw that <laughs> locked box multiple times against there and getting frustrated and leaving it in random places, just trying to figure out how to open it and getting mad that he can't. He's even taken it to a few toy shops and unfortunately no one has really been able to help him at this point. <laughs> I want you to roll an investigation check for your time mm -hmm. spent inside the park. Okay. Oh, I rolled low. Okay, that is an 11. An 11. Well, you spent your time in the park coming back day after day. There has been one other individual that has always been there. The same spot, the same place inside the park underneath an old Japanese maple. You could always identify because it's that dark crimson red of the leaves juxtaposed towards its more gray and white bark. And a few bit of leaves that have settled underneath. Just an older woman in simple robes that seems to have been meditating there day in and day out. As long as you would swing your sword, they would meditate from that time almost towards sunrise or sunset. Out of curiosity on one of those days, Toph is going to wander over next to her, perhaps a little bit on the other side of the tree. And he's going to sit in a similar way, kind of mimicking her. And he'll sit up straight kind of peek over at her trying to figure out what she's doing and instead of asking right away he's just going to do it himself to see maybe if I just also sit here very still and close my eyes it'll also work and so he'll close his eyes try to listen and then like two seconds in he'll open his eyes again and peek over at her to see if anything's happened at that point <laughs> like how long do I have to wait is this inner monologue in his head <laughs> You can see him slowly getting agitated. And he starts like rocking in his seat, trying to figure out and playing with dandelions, making a small crown for his head, trying to wait and see like, is she going to do anything else? Is there a trick to this sort of space right now? <laughs> First time you try it, wisdom saving throw disadvantage. Yeah, that's fair. Ooh, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Oh, that's not great. <laughs> the first day with a 12. Wait, nothing safe. Plus four. <laughs> You're in your own I world. do. I have a plus four. <laughs> I'm a paladin. That's a 16. 16. <laughs> Damn it, even your disadvantage rolls, Caustic. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> nothing happens at all. You're so disappointed but you're so curious at what they're doing. The fact that you've come up here to try again after getting done with your, with your swing the next day. And you sit there again, kind of next to her the next day, a little bit closer this time. Then his nose twitching. You can see his whiskers kind of go back and forth. And he'll try to sit still by like clenching his small paws over his knees to hold there. And you can hear him talking to himself, breathe, breathe, trying to think that that might help him focus for a little bit longer, but it doesn't. <laughs> and you make these attempts over a series of days, <laughs> but each time you last a little bit longer and your attention span grows a little bit longer because you've not been able to got a peep out of this individual. And finally, on the third day, 
roll just a wisdom ability check. Okay. That is great. 16. I love that your saves are stacked. Oh, no. just is. Why is your wisdom save a plus eight and your ability a minus one? <laughs> I'm not very well made, okay? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The, the save's pretty fucking good. <laughs> Trying to connect with whatever is going on, it's piqued your interest, but as if nothing is happening. But you're vocal frustrations at this point in describing yourself trying to breathe is undeniable with how close now that you've gotten almost right next to the individual oh no our knees are touching at this oh, point this is, little floof yes she probably if she's not meditating too hard can feel the soft fuzz on her knee You have quite the dedication, little one. Well, yeah, but it's not doing anything. Is it supposed to do something? <laughs> As that even breaks her concentration, you can see a big grandma-like smile come across her wrinkled face. As she takes time to take top of her robe off you can see the long silver hair braided down to one side you have to be really old to have that long of hair i have seen many sunrises and many sunsets little one how many i've never tried to count them can you not count very high Oh, I can count very high. I've been counting the number of days that you've been here. Oh, I have a friend who can't count very high, too, so it's okay if you can't. You've been here for five days. That's how high he can count. <laughs> well, I hope that you can help him get to six at some point in time. No, that's not my job. Xanron has to do it. Well, what is your job? job? I don't have a job. Well, mom uh, says it's to be very strong and brave, but I don't think that's a real job. Ah, uh, well, being strong and brave can be very much a job. You've been practicing here every yeah. day. Well, that's how you get strong, of course. Well, that's what I've been doing. Is it's something your, different. What muscles are you working on? Muscles in the mind. Toph is suddenly going to close his eyes again and try to actually flex his brain, <laughs> thinking that it's a muscle that he just needs to activate. You see, like, the frustration contorting oh on his face as he tries to figure out, and instead his face is just activating all different facial muscles. It looks like he's being electrocuted. Give me the intelligence the saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Low, below a tin, we have a little bit of the telekinesis fire off that you don't quite know how to control yet. Great. Oh, oh man! No, I have a I'm saving throw. Oh, that is a thirteen. <laughs> That's about to be bad. Thirteen. <laughs> and it's um, it's like feeling. It's like detecting a small sonic boom as you're there. This little bunny is sending out these kinetic waves from it. My my my. Am I you doing are... it wrong? No, no. You're not doing it wrong at all. You're just doing something very different. Tell me. Uh, hmm. If I could help you in anything that you wished, I've been practicing so much, I would like to help you focus on what you want to focus on. Don't worry about what I'm focusing on. What have you been trying to get better at? What have I been trying to get better at? Or what does my mom want me to get better at? 
What do you, little one, want to get better? I want to make toys. Toys? Yeah. Like, I I wanted to be able to, like, carve this little duck, but I accidentally, in the last part, chopped its head off instead because I wasn't very careful, and then nobody wanted it. And so I just put it in the water, and it floated away like a little wooden block. I was working on some music boxes, but then I gave one away as a gift. And then the other one I still have because I didn't want to give it up. And then I also worked on some cute little ones on a ship, but then the ship was actually something that we stole, even though I didn't know we stole it. But I think then we bought it, but I don't know where it is now. Well, what do you have to work with? My hands? And he'll hold up his two soft paws, but they're calloused on the inside. <laughs> of course, any raw materials? Um, oh, and he'll pull out like a small invertebrate bro- bone of his mother. Oh. I've got some of these and um, I think this is a hip bone. <laughs> oh, we can make many things out of this. Like what? I haven't seen any toys made of bone before. Oh, you can make Also, many. I don't know if my mom will like it. Remember, it's not what your mother wants. Not what she want. See, these paws. These can be used to make anything that you desire. Smiles. Let's start with smiles. I have a family. Well, they're more like friends, but I call them family. I don't know if they know that. Don't tell them. Yeah, let's start with that. Okay. Over the process of the week, your friend in the park teaches you how to make your mark without any tools or proficiencies at all. You learn the mending cantrip. (laughs) <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. you may use this to apply to any time you want to make small objects tinkering checks that would normally make now you're rolling with your mending which is essentially like rolling a spell attack so it's a very high number for you okay sweet What's the object that you make, the first piece with that bone that involves family? What does it look like? Let's see. It's it's actually going to be a series of flowers, especially because it's named after his mom. And as far as he knows, she just goes by different flower names but also they're all different sizes one really tall and thin another short not short average height for a flower another that's also almost very bright red all of them resembling the colors of her party her family in different ways beautiful see you thought that you couldn't make something. Well, they're just flowers. I don't know what to do with them now. No one's going to want to buy these. Remember. Half of my friends won't use them. They didn't even like the vests I made them. Well, except for Nelson. He likes those. Not all things were meant to be sold, little one. Some things we create just because we want to create them. But isn't that how you measure the value? Oh, now that will have to focus on what I'm good at. And she Money? puts a hand over your shoulder. Oh, no. Now, if we can work on getting you to sit still, and that is where we will cut. <laughs> Sam, what has Biddy been up to? Well, realizing that 
everybody is really doing their own thing. She would probably wake up a little later than usual on that first day of their rest and their relaxation so that she could have some privacy. She would just lay there in peace and silence before eventually realizing she didn't like this. So she would then get up, get dressed, and get out for the day. And I, I feel as though she would probably hang around the harbor for a bit, bantering back and forth with fishermen she just met and uh, different people who are probably working, but she doesn't care because she's resting. Um, <laughs> and at some point during the day, maybe their lunch times or brunch, if, you know, fishermen brunch, bottomless mimosas, she'd probably drink with them. <laughs> and crack jokes, probably sharing stories of both of their adventures and potentially realizing that they're probably lying through their teeth, but nonetheless, pushing more drinks on them so they can be jolly and merry. Not wanting yet to be around everybody. She would do this till late in the evening. Like she would be that person stumbling in late at night on this first evening and like peeking through any of the doors in the lodging just to make sure that everyone was snoring before finding her bed and passing out. However, Biddy would wake up this second day, but not wake up as like rested and refreshed as she was before. She, she would have been stirring throughout the night, waking up <laughs> the worst like every 30 minutes or things like that because she became overwhelmed with anxieties and guilt. Guilt for wasting a day towards something that she said she would never give up on. And with that, very groggily, but not allowing her sleepiness to overtake her, set out to explore and travel all over Waterdeep. But just starting in the close proximity of their lodging, you could probably see Biddy <laughs> trucking along the streets, walking faster than usual as she would peer up at different hanging wooden signs or like big posted signs, maybe nailed to a wall or picketed ones until she would come across a large wooden, like kind of rickety boarded sign with a, with a shop's name on it. And it was Items and Oddities. It had two very large windows on the front of it, and just peering inside, she could see rows of trinkets and things she's never seen before, and books, and an assortment of items that really intrigued her. So she would walk up, grab hold of the handle of this large oaken door, and push through it. And she would start gandering and padding through all of these bookshelves, old looking tomes, and even at stacks of pages that were probably tattered and torn at the edges where they were separated from their books. But I feel she would sigh, not being able to find a very specific tome that she had been longing to discover again. So after hours of her digging through rows and rows and rows of books. Biddy would close the last one and like dust particles would probably come out of its crease before returning it to its home. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Young lady. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It just was a... yeah, You should probably clean your books. It's a uh, smaller gnome with uh, thick robes in a, uh, in a very, very Gandalf style hat that's collected its dust over the period of time. <laughs> As he kind of bats it out to the side. I apologize. If that's anything that I can adjust his spectacles, if there's anything I can do to help you find what you've been looking for, you've been through quite a few of. It's just this literal, it's just, it's like hand and dust marks where you've been going across yeah. more of the untouched classics. Uh, you are you are in the woods of the local bookstore right now. Mm -hmm. I, I I feel like alongside that, she probably would have put things back incorrectly after pulling out an assortment and be like, oh, I bet this one went here. Are there any nope, it goes here, I guess. 
<laughs> you, like the library back on the Dewey Decimal System. He's talking to you and rearranging exactly where things need to be <laughs> while he's talking. If there's anything that I can do to help assist, please. I uh, I, actually, um, you've have you been in Waterdeep a while? <laughs> Store's been here for over 177 years and proud of it. Oh, that is quite a long, that's older than I am. Um, well, d have you ever come across a very dusty, uh, rusted over, ornately made dark green tome with perhaps a language you couldn't read? <laughs> I'm not a language that I couldn't read. I'm uh, completely proficient and comprehensible in everything. Well, that's impressive. Congratulations. Yeah. I learned it 44 years ago. As he goes and he has his own tome hatched to his side. <laughs> he reveals huh. that he indeed is a collector and a wizard himself. So have you seen something like that? Or know of any other local shop that could have something <laughs> if there's a home within the city would it be <laughs> it would be here it certainly couldn't be <laughs> any place else was yeah yeah obviously i knew that i was just asking i'm glad that you know that too uh well and she's just kind of looking around not to make eye contact because she feels awkward now well, by the way, I've been so rude. Uh, my name is Davin. Davin Finepatch. Oh, hello, Davin. I am I am Bitty. It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, you say a, a green tome, you say. A, a language that's oh, would, hard to comprehend. Uh, does it look like uh, you seem to be someone well-versed in what you're looking for? It, it, is it more uh, fey and silvish or... Uh, does it have stronger characters like Dwarvish? I'm not going to lie to you. I could not quite tell the last time I had seen it. Yeah. But I, I could tell that it was perhaps an ancient language. Roll a history check. <laughs> hey, King. Hell yeah. And during the course of it, it's something um, that just needs to do your memory jogged a little bit. As he begins pulling out more green tomes, you begin to remember, ah, oh, that's kind of what it looks like in your mind the last time that you encountered this. Oh, we could certainly get to the bottom of this. Uh, with his assistance, I want you to roll an investigation check with advantage. Okay. Oof. Not that good. I'm going to try to lucky it. I need to actually see if I have a lucky. I do. I have one. Now, is that just one roll, or is that also at advantage? This will be, uh... uh you your, like it. Uh, yeah, it'll be your lowest roll, so... This oh, is just a single... No, just a single, single roll. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my goodness. It's six and seven. Oh... Panning over tomes like you have been inside the shop just unable to find this missing relic if it's not in your pile then it certainly must be here do you have like a special section for what? things like this things that you know most common folk could not read if it's, oh, I hate to say this, but if it's not within these stacks, then I would not know where to begin to check. Mm. Well. But 
You have a good description. Let, let me see. Just give me one second. And I'm going to roll an investigation check with advantage for Davin Finepatch. I, I'm just, you know, the substance of this tome, anything about it. All I can tell you is that I had an elder who looked at it once and had the most fear from it and told us to take it away. Fear? It seemed that way. I could be wrong, but I can't exactly go back to ask him. You should have said so. This would be oh? something uh, I would not keep on a public shelves. Come. She follows. I just look in the protected storage. As he goes through to the back, unlocking, as you can see, several arcane locks. As they're visible, almost Doctor Strange-like, as it opens up this first arcane door into the second, into the third, into a set of small stacks. And you want to talk about dust as it pours out from this room. You can see the god rays that poke through from the stained glass windows cut a swath of just heavy dust as it flows within this room. He spits out in small candle lights, <laughs> fill the room. How about we look a different way? You can concentrate on that memory. All right. As he extends his hand and makes a small arcane sigil. You're going to roll grabs it. your arcana check with his. Oh, gosh. Okay. We're going to set the DC for this. It's been difficult to find. This is going to be a DC 20. Dang it. Mine's a flat roll. He has a plus six. So, at the same time, concentrate with me. Three. Okay. Two. One. Oh, mine is delayed. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a dice on it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Easy peasy. Take my 1d4. <laughs> And as you both concentrate, the image of that tome begins to conjure in front. What does it look like, Benny? The tome? Yes. It's quite large. It's probably um, a little bit smaller than the size of her torso. So even carrying it has been difficult at the times that she did. And it's, it's old and really like pilling at the edges of this book. But then there's like a metal that is rusted over and ornately um, placard all over this uh, front and the back down the spine of this book. There's writing and gold lettering on the front in that language that she cannot read. And if you were to open the book, the pages are all like deckled edged and the writing is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but just not something she could interpret. And on the back of it, there is a sign or a symbol or a character that she can't quite remember, but she believes that it had some kind of horn. And it's dark green. And while Davin is concentrating, almost oh, with his eyes closed to hold this image up, 
it fades away and you can see that book almost 12 feet away from you leaning to one side on a bookshelf within arm's reach above your head. She's going to pull away from Davin for a second and she's a little shocked. And as she looks at him, um, may, may I hold that? And she's pointing at that tome. Yes, uh, if you don't mind, Gav, I could just take a small peek first. I don't mind at all. As he reaches up to grab that tome, it flies off of the bookshelf and into your hands. Oh, I'm so sorry to oh, know it came over me. Are you, and that is where we're going to cut. We're going to let you guys go and grab your beverages. Go use the restroom. We'll be back in just a minute. Man. Dang. What a cool episode. <laughs> Things get interesting. <laughs> Love this. Everybody's so cool. What a great episode. Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, dude, I've gotten goosebumps so many times already. Oh. Welcome back, everybody. Good old fashioned story time. My favorite. We don't know. We're going to have to find out. I don't know. I don't know what she's found. We're getting there. Me too, Rhino. Me too. I needed this. I like this Davin fine patch. I guess I can officially create Davin fine patch in here now. A conjurer. Good to see you, Harvey. Appreciate all your energy and chat right now as we go through all these discoveries of their downtime. Live shows are good to be back. Trust me, way too long without D&D over here. Ooh, echo that sentiment. I have been jonesing for my D&D fix. You know that it's bad when I start making characters and theorizing different multi-classes <laughs> and then it's like, oh God, he needs his fix bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. We have major updates going into Foundry and OBS since we played. Oh, I'm like, shit. I'm like, no, no, we're going to hold off on all of these until the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> they are problems we must deal with, but I do not choose to deal with them currently. <laughs> currently, in important NPCs, we have Davin Finepatch, Reeves, and Reginald. <laughs> Which Reginald is now a part of the party. He's been upgraded. <laughs> Reginald can move into this folder. <laughs> oh, I really hope we see Ryu's again just for the shits and giggles, honestly. Like, I, there's no reason to see him ever again. He may just never appear. 
but I really hope we do. <laughs> if if there is like a greater power or deity, I hope they act like a DM and are like, oh well, gl- this week Glam mowed the lawn. He put him in this folder. <laughs> <laughs> just, just click, you know, like just click dragging us around. What a good boy. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up my water. <laughs> Hmm. All this time, I'm wondering what the fuck is Brom doing? Yeah, right? Hmm. Getting us into more debt again? Yeah. As wealthy as we are, still get into debt. Yep, yep. still. <laughs> Common tropes. Mm hmm. In debt again. But this time, <laughs> psych, it's life debt. <laughs> Previously, he was paying out our ways, and now he saves our life. This is the life debt we owe him for being our healer. Yep, he's, he's just cashing in his healing chips. Yeah, that's, that's probably fair. We owe him something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but shh, don't let him know that. No, of course not. That's no. why we said it while he's away. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And he will not rewatch this. Nope. He, he will have no idea this happened. No and idea. You're in on it too, chat. You are in on it too. <laughs> It's all in agreement. If you don't like it, leave now. <laughs> this is how we roll here. I was saying this to Glam over on uh, Discord DMs, but I'm so happy that this episode has basically turned into our tales of Barsing Say, and I fucking love that. There's nothing like, oh wrong with Barsing Say. <laughs> I mean, you know, as they say, there is no ore in Barsing Say. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It has been a super fucking fun time. Does this count as splitting the party? I mean, yes. Yes, no. Like. (laughs) I'm not mad either way. I just know people say like, you're not supposed to split the party. And I do anyway. So I was just wondering if this counts in a point in my favor. Hmm. All I know is I was ready to watch fucking Nelson buy the fucking the entire clothing store. That's what I was expecting. I mean, we get a whole week. I figure like yeah. Nelson's partying it up. Nightlife with the rich and the famous and fabulous riding in the best carriages. You can ride down the main street of Waterdeep. You know, he's got palm bearers. He's on like, what's one what of those things they carried like royalty on? He, oh. Words are hard. Yeah, um, yeah he's you know, grapes being fed into his massive snores. You know, like. right? People, mm-hmm. people try to get into the VIP, but they don't even know about Nelson's lounge. Like past that, they don't even know. <laughs> I have this it's very entertaining. <laughs> I want to read the like tabloids and just see Nelson splattered all over them. <laughs> Like Each day glasses. he's with a different celebrity, yes. Wearing the same outfit again. Yep. Don't <laughs> worry, Daniel Radcliffe did that. It's okay. <laughs> so, how we will handle this second round is just tying up a loose end from your time, and everyone is going to be reconvening actually at this rooftop establishment that Xanarin and Reginald are at. I was really hoping it was Nelson's place. (laughs) (laughs) I want to put a path and go ahead and buy a whole, yeah, house. Yeah. Maybe he has bought the place. I don't know. (laughs) Have you, Nelson? Do you have a fat pad that you're having? No, no, this isn't for, well, you know, from the, this is a short term endeavor. (laughs) Yeah, no, no long term. Ter- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, So Rent- Rentals only. <laughs> Think of yourselves coming uh, coming together for a dinner uh, you haven't seen each other in almost a week, which I'm surprised. Nobody paired off and did anything. They all went their own separate ways. Mm-hmm. I was actually waiting for you to say what Brom was doing, and then I was gonna do something yeah, with Brom. Yeah, find out about Brom. <laughs> but you didn't say yeah. anything. Oh, oh, oh no. and Zanrin had a, a party yeah, we, together. We 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 did we did have something planned, but I okay, don't think okay, we okay. to get to it. 
Oh, no, it's there. It is. On, on the rooftop? Can oh, we we'll play where it's starting like one of those evenings when Xanran hears one of the puzzle boxes bang against his wall for like the third consecutive time? Freaking fiddlesticks! Are you kidding me? I'm just gonna peer around the door and look through. Tough. What? What? You know, catching his tone. <laughs> if if you planned to kill the the bedroom wall, you could have done it earlier. But I imagine that wasn't your goal. What's going on? If you look at the wall, there's like a ton of dents in it from where I've thrown the box against it multiple times. Sort of. Nothing's wrong. I just can't get the stupid puzzle box open, and I've got two of them, and they're different. Xanarin's going to look at those for a moment and marvel at the fact that those boxes have not been smited and therefore the wall is still intact. It's, it, you know, it's clear that there's frustration here, but also this is clearly an objective that Toph cares a lot about because Toph is being frustrated with the box, but also is repeatedly coming back to it. He's going to walk over and pick up the box that's just been thrown. Well, It's not possible to open. It's locked. <sighs> Well, I don't quite know about that. What do you mean? Maybe it's never meant to be. Maybe they glued the whole thing shut at the end, and now it's just a prank box. That's probably what they did. Those stupid jerks. And he's going to take the other one and throw it against the wall again. <laughs> Can I roll to catch it midair? Go for it. All right. Uh, is that like can a I roll to throw it as hard check? as I can? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> coming in hard, coming from top. I'm mad. What, what did you say I was rolling there, Ruba? Slide a hand. <laughs> oh, slide a hand. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Lucky. That's, ne that's never gone oh. badly. <laughs> oh, well, thank God. Okay. You looked at that well, one for a second. Yeah, yeah no. Top, roll to eat. <laughs> All right. I will, what, do unarmed strike? Yeah. Just in case, I'm going to rule that I I'm trying to catch this with my fucking... I'm just, just going to rule, I... <laughs> rule that I'm catching this with a dark iron hand so <laughs> that I don't <laughs> die. Pull through it. <laughs> Unable to grab it. It bangs against the wall, causing another dent there. I knew it had to be a trick. That's why the dragon probably didn't even open it. He probably couldn't do it. Or he already got the good stuff from it and then he glued it shut. Hmm. Toph, have you ever heard of an old phrase, not all who wander are lost? No. Well, it's almost a little bit like that. You have been working with these boxes for quite some time and I think you're going to be closer than you think. Go ahead and pick up both of them and I'm going to lay them down on the table. Come on, take a look. He'll reluctantly do it and kind of like huff as he sits down across from Xanrin. Okay, so take a seat. Focus right here. You see this? You're not wrong. They are locked. But this, this is something that's not a puzzle to open in the traditional sense. It's not quite like a toy. But you can still open it. You just need the right key. So at this point, I'm going to produce my thieves tools uh, and I'm going to harken back to the point in the carriage where I started to teach Toph about how to use his tinker's tools and use thieves tools for similar purposes. And, you know, some of that tutelage that was hopefully passed on at that point. So these uh, tools are like keys then? Keys to many different kinds of doors. But again, it's not so simple as turning the lock, you need to work with a little bit of finesse. And I'm going to spend the next few minutes sort of demonstrating each of the different tools, talking about their purpose, talking about how some parts are meant to specifically hold parts of the lock's mechanism, whilst others are supposed to be more slender and for specifically triggering certain parts deeper within the lock's mechanism. And uh, when all of that is said and done, I'm going to pass the thieves tools over and uh, allow Toph to give it a little bit of a try. See if he can open one of those boxes. What if I break your keys trying to open it? As long as you don't throw them, you won't break them. You can throw those boxes as many times as you want, but please don't throw my tools. It, it, it's, a, it's a right bugger to replace them. 
Okay, I won't then. Though we do have a lot of money, you could get fancy keys. Ah, uh, they don't sell these that easily. Not from uh, reputable sources. When something's made for stealing things, you can't just buy it in a shop. Oh, so you go to a special person. Uh, a blacksmith who doesn't mind taking a little bit of extra coin here or there for some finer purchases. Yeah. I know a blacksmith. If we need to, we can go. Well, I don't know where he is. Never mind. And he'll start working on the lock. Toff, make a thieves tools check. It'll just be a D20 since you don't have a uh, proficiency with it. It'll be a flat roll. 16. Hmm. 16. It seems like the progress and what Xanarin is teaching you is working. I hear a clicking sound. I think I'm doing something right. That's the sound it's supposed to make, right? Like it's not going to explode. No, not unless there's something. In a moment of panic, I'm going to use detect magic <laughs> just to make sure these damn things are not exploding because we've already had enough nonsense with the bunny and the bombs. You know, this is, this is totally not worth it. So, all the box. Oh, God, I've covered the whole screen. My apologies. Uh, no, I box is magical. <laughs> we have the collapsible card, so it doesn't mess up. Uh, no, there's no there's no magic attached to this, but you know what the DC of this particular piece is. What is it? The DC for this is actually an 18. And that sure, click you is... You could have lowered it. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, oh, I know, I know, but it's... Oh, but trust, there's there's cool pieces to be had, assuming it gets learned. It's going to be okay. Go continue, okay. off. Make another tinker's check. Or thief's tools check. How many clicks do I have to listen for in here? So this one's a little more complicated than most typical ones. A lock you find on most doors, yeah, that first click would have just been one and done. This is specifically holding something, though. These locks are a lot more complicated because of some... I'll explain what it's called, but basically inside of it, you've got lots of different clockwork that comes together to make this thing function. It's not a normal lock. So Does that mean take, there's something really valuable on the inside? It might. Take so. this one. You're going to need to do something. I'm going to show Toph how to balance one of the tools between his little rabbit paws so that he can still manipulate his others and add a third piece of the thieves tools in to pick this particular lock. Something that requires a little bit more dexterity, but will definitely uh, get to the heart of that particular lock. Roll this oh, one with advantage. I'll show you a little trick. My mom taught me and he'll actually use one of his ears to come down and hold one in place. Damn. She had really good ears and she was able to do that. And she was able to get open a lot of doors, but I didn't see why. But this makes a lot more sense now. Well, 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 would you look at that? Yeah, that'll do the trick. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Good thing we avoided that now. One with an advantage. <laughs> and Toph's ear kind of slips and it... <laughs> and it breaks. Oh, no. Uh, Xanarin is going to, having unlocked some of the secrets of his magic, he's going to use the mending cantrip on the Before thieves' Before you're able them. to. Oh. Cough. You can feel that tool as you're just you're pushing and pushing on it until it until it breaks. And you, you both audibly hear this break. But you know that these are Xanarin's tools and you feel awful about what you've already said. But you concentrate on what you've learned inside the park. Right. Xanarin, I think Brom's calling your name. Maybe he needs some toilet paper or something. Can you go help him really quick? You know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna auto fail this insight check <laughs> because I, because I know better. But I'm gonna indulge Toff at this point. <laughs> Bring an well, extra I'm... roll just in case. When I was in there, I took all of it. My goodness, if if Brom doesn't have toilet paper, it could be a disaster. You saw what happened in the harbor with one of those rocks. Can you imagine what happens if Brom drops one of his rocks and then, oh goodness. Yeah, no, go stop no his rocks. Survive. 
I need to go. I'll I'll be right back. And I'm gonna I'm gonna head outside the door. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hurry around the corner. I'm not going anywhere. I'm on the other side of the door frame. And I'm just sort of I'm I'm smiling as best an owl can smile. I'm just sort of shaking my head. <laughs> Toph is going to close his eyes real hard and just like, men, men, <laughs> men. <laughs> and you can feel it form back within your little buddy, Paul. <laughs> oh, I think he's actually okay. I can hear him. He says he's fine and no more rocks are dropping. <laughs> are you sure? I, 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 I don't know. We want to make sure. No, I'm that- sure he's okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give up the ghost and walk back in and say, all right, well, what's next? In fact, if this is not quite working, I think I have a way of showing you. It's not it, I, I've never done this before, but I need to um I need to experiment really quickly. This will look a little strange. And Zaren is going to use something, and this is totally... I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now. You can totally rule this doesn't work, because this is not necessarily how the cantrip works. It was meant to. I am going to use Encode Thoughts. Um, and what I'm doing with that is I'm sort of putting two fingers to my forehead. And as I do so, I'm just pulling a feather. It's not an actual feather. It's more of a sort of psychic one. That's sort of emanating from my forehead, and it's very wispy and strand-like. And I'm just sort of going to pass it onwards to Toph, and it's going to float from my hand straight towards your forehead. And I, I contained within that, I'm going to try and send some of the knowledge required to understand the finesse required when using this particular technique with Thieves' Tools. Something which shows that it's not all about pressure, it's about... <laughs> What have you done? Oh no. Oh no, Becca, what have you done? I was rolling to see about Pop's mom's involvement. Oh boy. Oh no. She patrols his brain space and you were trying to insert something. I was trying to gift something. I wasn't trying Okay, shit, you right. Oh, like God. a like a firewall. That slam shut. I'm sorry. It was such a cool idea. I was such a cool idea. <laughs> Tom, describe what it's like having your mother gatekeep your thoughts. <laughs> what is this? That's like girl boss. <laughs> yeah. Toph just hears this screeching noise from almost from inside his mind, just screaming his name. But all that Xanran can see is as this feather floats to him, as if there's like this sudden angry gust of wind that comes from behind Toph and just blows it out of the room and outside of the window, completely gone. Some random person on the street is going to learn how to do some lock picking at this point. (laughs) So uh, roll, rolling insight at disadvantage. I'm actually purposefully removing reliable talent there, so I got a four. I don't. I don't even realize that's what's happened. This is a very new technique to me. I'm not quite sure I understand it, and I'm. I'm I don't even know that Toph's mom has done is the reason why this has failed. I'm just. Oh, oh, I'm quite I, need, I need to practice that. Make this check with advantage because you're still being helped but without the proficiency gift that he was going to lend you. Okay. And damn, that would have been reliable talent too. You were sure to succeed. I know, I'm so sorry. It was such <laughs> a it. cool description. Uh, sometimes it's not meant to happen. It's okay. There's a reason his mom didn't teach him. 16. Stuck in the same spot. <laughs> you should have lowered. I really should have. I'm so sorry. The DC for me. Oh. <laughs> You guys have an eventful evening and time well spent together. But much like when I tried to learn to water ski the first time, it just didn't happen. (laughs) And there's still work to be done. And Xandrin, you consider maybe an easier lock next time. But you wouldn't learn in that way anyway. Mm. So the DC will remain or the future. DC 18 trying to teach Toph 
thieves tools the dice have spoken i'm so sorry <laughs> there are two boxes correct yes Toph, how about this whatever's inside this is yours watch me for a second you're gonna open one of these we're gonna come back to this Pass me the thieves tools real quick let me uh let me see what i can do about this other one okay now i am going to try and unlock the second one and we will no. cut there no. oh okay good good I hope you roll a nat one. I, 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 I fucking deserve it at this point. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I hope you. <laughs> oh my god. Anyone else uh, doing a, a combination with somebody else in the party while they were out and about? <laughs> uh, this is an open invitation, but if anybody has any significant. Um, memories or places in Waterdeep uh, and just events that happened in their past, uh, I would definitely have asked about that uh, for potentially bringing up a site for a ceremony to see if I could unlock some powers for Brom, Nelson, or uh, Jacob and see if there's some way they can benefit from all of that. Uh, I mean... Nelson seem, has I, been yeah, hanging I, out with the upper crust, so I don't know if he's heard of anything maybe <laughs> that might help Xanrin out. <laughs> While inside Ooh. a shadow anchor, you have a plus three to cocaine rolls. <laughs> 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 Super effective. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, partying I'm like Nelson is right now is <laughs> don't wear pants. <laughs> but it's only if you if the cocaine is done off of a mirror or off of your pinky. <laughs> Okay then. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, someone to... could be with me if they want to be beating up random people for information in an <laughs> alley somewhere. I will be stalking you, following you through the docks, because I was too afraid to go to the docks by oh, myself. Well, then you definitely have seen me kind of just gravity punch the shit out of uh, a few dock hands who don't really know anything. <laughs> I'm just taking. I feel like on that first day, yeah. <laughs> Biddy would take Brom with her <laughs> to go drink <laughs> and do nothing else. What does your gravity punch look like? Like, what style of gravity punch are you into? I mean, like it's a like... a falcon punch? It mostly looks like a normal punch, but, you know, it just warps gravity around his hand and kind of a, a black... Um, it's almost like a like a shield, like a barrier forms as the as the gravity gets warped, and it's it's not even as much as so much as a punch as, as in the, the gravity is increased on his own hand. So it's like... The, at the point of contact it's just like gravity gets like 10 times more powerful damn bro cool. like a mantis shrimp so yeah Biddy, i do have yeah. plans so the first day as rom has gotten up with no one else that empty house feeling as brahm gets up early Kind of pokes around as everybody else is sleeping in specifically with you taking the longest he's seen other people take off and he's been kind of hoping to tag along with someone he doesn't necessarily really want to be alone on the first day but since you don't ever get up he lets you sleep he checks like two three times <laughs> Listens like anybody stirring around. Oh. He pulls out his to do list and he takes off. And he goes out into the city in search of the watchers. He takes care of the bills, pays off the ship's debt. Does a little mild grocery shopping for back at the rooms. Ah, gotta make sure they have some of this. Otherwise, I'd be upset if I didn't have any cream for my coffee either. It's just a day of monotonous tasks. Trying to get all the little small things and creature comforts. 
but it's not until he stops by at one of the aviaries and he sits down and he pulls out a piece of blank parchment (sighs) God this is overdue And he begins to write a note to his family that he hasn't sent correspondence to in a very, very long time. Half of it's rambling, really just apologizing for not communicating in so long, full of questions of a past that he know that he's missed. And he begins recounting more things that he hasn't got to be a part of than what he's got to be a part. And as he gets halfway through it, he tears it up. <laughs> I can't stand that. He gets up from his spot. I'll I'll do it tomorrow. And he leaves the aviary. His bills and his grocery list. Gets back and stocks up. Got plenty of coffee and cream. Light snacks. Got a pound of honey ham. Fresh bread. Butter. Kind of all the fixings he's organized. He even has the beer lined up in the refrigerator. Anybody's favorites, ciders, meads, it's all set out as if he was throwing a small party, but no one's invited. <sighs> he gets back over towards his room and he listens over again. Doesn't hear anything from Biddy the first day. The second day, that's when you hear the, he begins knocking over on your door. <coughs> Morning. Morning. Oh. Because she's awakening from this not very good sleep, she pulls the pillow over her face. And pushes it into her ears. <laughs> whatever he says is even more muffled. Rise and shine, Betty. The I word can't hear bitty. you. The uh, mention of the word Betty, and in particular the syllable T, you will hear Xanarin in a few rooms over fall out of the rafters. It's still non-responsive. <laughs> He's just fallen out of the rafters again at the mention of T. Uh, I was wondering if we could go, uh, go for a little brunch today, Biddy. Biddy pulling it, the pillow down <laughs> furiously and just smacking it down in her thighs as she's laying straight as a board looking up at the ceiling. <sighs> um. Oh, you know, when you get there. Uh, it's, it's a big old smile crosses his face because he's been without human interaction for a full day. And it was a it was a bit much. <laughs> Come on. Hold your horses as now she's probably like yanking and a fresh pair of socks on and buttoning up her shirt and attaching her vest. And she <laughs> walks up to the door and just opens it as fast as she can. Are you just the most impatient person ever? <laughs> and you see him. Brahm is dressed up to go drink. He is armorless for the first time and he's where he's just got just fancy fancy tabard and he's got himself a hat with a big feather on it think like final fantasy red mage style kind of opulence (laughs) just yes she noticing that you don't have like your heavy armor on something's different about you (sighs) Get your tail. Did you no, I got a new hat. <laughs> it's the hat. 
It's slimming, isn't That's it? That's what I said. What did you say? I said hat. Oh, wait. S same feather. He kind of shakes it like wobble, 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 wobble. That's a very, very cool hat, from. Well, if we're going out in the town, you know. If... Well, I don't have anything nicer than this. I haven't really spent my money. Oh, yep. You'll be brightening the room up just yourself, I promise. Great. Can't wait. <laughs> so you guys head to brunch, which indeed he damn well knows will go to lunch, into dinner. It is going to be one of those long patio days. <laughs> sit back you guys have a perfect view of the arbor it's getting close to sunset at this point all the good meals have been had multiple orders of Korean wings is Korean near to Waterdeep? no I just had them this weekend I just always order yard house wings so sort they're of fresh in my mind. Korea's just a little north of here. It's fine. Yeah. Just, pull just, another, just pull another bear out of ye old fridge. It's okay. <laughs> <sighs> Don't question it. It's fine. <laughs> you know, uh, went through a lot of crazy stuff down there. Yeah. They yeah, spend her she time. says lambing down a drink after she's probably gulped down a fifth one by now. It's wild what we've been through, Brom. Uh, I can't help but notice uh, that uh, I uh, I think I understand though your echo connection will a lot better today than I did the first. I'm sorry if I ever made any rude remarks. I, di I didn't know it was like that. I didn't know Nothing it was family. I feel sorry for. No. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know it was that close to you. I didn't know what I mean, you. I didn't tell you. Well, so you're not at fault. Just if because anything, somebody fine. doesn't tell you doesn't mean it's not on you to pick up. I know you meant no harm by it. Don't worry. No. I know. I know what it's like to miss family. I do. Miss mine all the time. Funny. And uh, I just want to let you know if there's anything, if there's anything that I can do to help, I'm there. I know I'm stubborn in my ways a lot of it. I know, I know. Oh, trust me, I know. I've been the, the first one to receive all of it. Oh, you could say I'm averagely stubborn. That's okay. I'm also pretty averagely stubborn. But I didn't tell you that. I don't know how that... As he takes a long pull from his ale. You're gonna drown in there. I will be before I'm able to ask this. I'm fine. I'll just spit it out. What? You want? You want to talk about it? What? Uh, she's obviously is very special. Yes. I mean, we had a very, very deep connection, you could say, but. It's been a very long time. And I haven't really talked about it much. I haven't really felt a need to since I uh, have my echo. I understand. 
it's just I, I, I felt that, I felt the connection that, that did. And she was one that walked in the light as well. And she was strong. And a healer. She must have cared about a lot of people. Probably cares for a lot of people. She's one of the kindest souls. But you noticing your resemblances and in, in your work lives, or what you used to do and how you care, it's honestly why I pick on you, because you're like a brother to me. Because it feels like my sister at times. <sighs> I hate to admit it. Yeah. You felt like a sister for a long time. Yeah. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it too. I missed a lot of good moments with my family. So I said, when we got a, a second, just wanted to take a day and let you know that I, I appreciate you. I appreciate all the shit you give me. I was about to say, you're being too nice right now. You need to stop. It's the, don't worry, it's the ale on it. <laughs> She's gonna start <laughs> gagging. <laughs> <sighs> stop, you're gonna make me throw up. <clears throat> too nice. I want to keep some for a rain check sometime. What, vomit? <clears throat> As he wipes away, he's got a little, he's got a little man cry going on, a little, little, few, few little <laughs> coming down. This has got the sunset. It's great. It's been good food. I, I, I just want to let you know that if you need any help with the memories, well, Betty, I'm here for you, and I'll do what I can. I appreciate that. That's very and nice. It's a special connection you got there, and I want to make sure that I want to make sure that it's always there and it's strong. Because family is important. We were, I thought we were going to lose her back in the cave. I can tell you this much. Wherever she had gone, we'd have followed. Thanks, Brom. You're welcome. And you're going to be able to choose a third level spell from Brom's knowledge to be able to put on Betty. And you can take a look at the list and choose whenever you like. And it could be, if it's a second level, it's fine. It could be up to a third. Okay. Ooh. Nelson. Arriving to pick up your threads. Distinguished gentleman Nelson. Is this time they have the mimosas are out? Like you're getting the full service. You're not the vagabond off the street. Yeah, but he comes in like super creepy through the door. You know, <laughs> he has to like grip the top of the door frame and like get his head under. Like, hello. <laughs> full Skexis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come out in pomp and circumstance and put your Gary Oldman robe on and it's as ostentatious as you imagine. It's ridiculous in all of its extravagance of colors. Not much different than that piece of warlock armor that's literally one different color on every swath that it has. It's just very Guardians of the Galaxy style piece. Uh, as they take away, take off my old robes, I 
make sure to note, I need that vest sewed inside this one. Oh. Yes, we, we could do that for you now. What does your vest look like if that's gonna be your Austin Powers style lining of this jacket? It's like, it's like a lame, it's like a cheap, like high school, <laughs> like choir lame, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know. This is your party vest. This is, could be anything. This is it. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Thank That's you. what we got at the party. I want you to make an arcana check. Once again, after you've sat there, you've ate their hors d'oeuvres, like you're sitting there as they're attentively getting to your lining. 27. 27. Ooh. Jeez. <laughs> this, is like the, thing. this is like we, those we dart matches. Some arcanas. 180. When you put these spell woven robes on, What's the first spell that you think about casting in these? Just like in your mind's eye, like you wearing, it's almost like third party. You're like, you're, you're envisioning yourself uh, doing something badass in these for the first time. What spell do you think you would be casting? Uh, I, I see myself like controlling nature and the ground around me in like a, an, epic version of of like mold earth where just like my power spreads out around you can feel it just surge over the plant life and the rocks and the ground and the walls like instantly taking a civilization uh and removing the society from it and aging it centuries just letting like plant oh. life spill mushrooms over crawl through every facet of everything whenever you cast a spell you can change the style, color, and material of this robe to reflect the appearance of the spell that you cast. Like chameleon style? Yes. Hell yeah. Come to learn invisibility, baby. Get off for free. <laughs> it's you get well acquainted with Nelson's third leg. <laughs> God. As he no. doesn't turn invisible, it's just it's the clear sauce. petticoat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's not what I was imagining. <laughs> I'm calling oh, the no. police on you. <laughs> Let me do it. <laughs> I have been against this lore from the I'm start. start. <laughs> No, it you is documented on YouTube. Where you can watch all Listen, Glam, you are my cam Indian buddy. Court. You really need to get your act together. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry, Glam. I've noted your objections. I've got a log here. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> so, do my new robes have like a pocket for it, or <laughs> what? They can. <laughs> what are you putting Inside in your pockets? <laughs> they can literally do whatever you want. Like baseball sliding shorts. Is that a thing? Yeah. Then yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just you don't say yes to things you don't know. Don't do that. That's why I confirmed it first. <laughs> you just confirmed if they're real, not what they are. That's not the same thing. Don't worry, I'll, I'll draw you a diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> They get you fitted and their eyes are just beyond because this they're actually putting the spell robes on you when you imagine casting the spell and they're seeing it manipulated in front of them for the first time as you become the dirt lord. Yeah, <laughs> the fisher king. And the floor, yeah. like you've completely modified the store by the time it's done. <laughs> Like there is moss and mushrooms. You have created this ecosystem that has sprawled out from underneath you. You look like a motherfucking archmage Hell as yeah. you begin walking out of this joint. And it even trails a little bit into the cobblestone after you, as you trail out with these robes as you definitely look like someone not to be 
Uh, I can, can I, I saw somebody do this once. Can I flick them another platinum for their trouble? 100%. <laughs> they reach out and snag that bad boy. <laughs> I love how unintentionally Bull and Nelson is. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I broke it. I best I gotta buy it. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be getting free rooms yeah. at a casino soon. <laughs> yeah. Jacob. Don't worry, he's gonna figure out that he hates it. <laughs> <laughs> We all do. It doesn't make doesn't make any difference. <laughs> any more investigating around town? Around town? No. But depending on the the time that's available, maybe a visit back to that cave of gold without a dragon guarding it oh yeah, yeah you absolutely have the uh okay have the plans to get there uh it's and you would be the first person as you've kind of made your day pack and adventured out towards the lake and where the waterfalls are at doing a good job of making sure that no one else has followed anywhere near behind. This has been kind of like your solo hike out to the woods. Go ahead and give me a survival check with advantage. Sheets uh, be weird. Okay. Oh God. I'm going to go and throw an in spawn on it. Why not? <laughs> 17. 17. Well, at first, it takes a second to get acclimated back to the map. Lake is undeniable. And you proceed back into the depths of that amethyst layer. In your own little Indiana Jones style montage of wading through, going down underneath the water, popping back up in an underwater cave, crossing back beneath a waterfall, and eventually back to where your transformation happened. You've made it back to the horde. I think uh, <clears throat> as he's he's looking for for Bill Shale, um, well for for the genie and and also you know still has his issues with his own uh, his own gin, but uh, so I think he's the curiosity and the the need for revenge got a little bit uh, a little bit too hard to ignore, so he's gonna go explore that cave for items that would be helpful in fighting, killing a gen. At first he was saying no, cause you know, we've been burned once or twice, but uh, too much curiosity. Go also ahead and roll. Also for materials that a forge might want. Also for materials of? Uh, I don't know. I mean, gold works, but uh, you know, if there are ah uh, rare materials, rare armor, materials, yeah. Go ahead and give me an investigation check for both of those. You can start with whichever. Okay. Twenty-four on the uh, first one. All right, on the gin. Mm -hmm. Twenty on the second. As you patrol over what is just a massive treasure hoard, 
it's not so much looking for a needle in a haystack. It's just, what's the first thing that magically draws your own attention? I think, uh, I think given his experience, he'd be looking for <clears throat> something similar to like, like his locket or something, something that was ornate with jewels in it. Um, maybe something that's like, a piece of uh, like a, another locket or a ring or something, something that looks like it could contain that kind of magic that he possibly might harness. And it's not a vessel that you find first. It's a pattern. It's a pattern that you've seen many times before that you could see with your eyes closed it's an infernal pattern one from the city of brass it's almost as if it's a style of paisley but infernal and it lines this midnight blue cloak as the inside of it is crimson and gold with this infernal marking As you take this cloth off the top of it it unravels itself and begins to float in front of you as this cloak of gin extends itself you see a small empty vessel one unclaimed by any gin. Think of this as your Ghostbuster style trap. Nice. This cloak. Not only does it allow you to float, but it has three charges. The three charges on it of our infernal nature. You can use three charges to expend a third level fireball. We're back. Or individual charges of Scorching Ray. On the second piece. Looking for interesting materials. There is no shortage of it. With a 20, you easily go back to this dark iron ore that has not been smelted by any other nefarious chemicals. It's the easiest one to spot out. And with its interesting properties, you're able to gather up more than enough that would attract any guild merchant. And I've still got that giant bag of holding with me, so. Yeah, you could really just. Just shoveling it in there. Anything else as you stare back at what's greater than almost any library could hold? You've got what you come you came here for. He's <laughs> he's gonna kind of start to walk out, but then stop for a moment. Kind of sigh to himself, turn around, I'm gonna look for a toy in the in the thing. Any sort of anything that could be a toy for Toph. Roll an investigation check. Twenty. Jeez. Oh God, wow. twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not even going. I'm not even going. My investigation's a plus ten. <laughs> it's Christmas for Toph. You can choose me to go off the the uh, trinkets roll, or you can just describe what it looks like. Um. Hmm. Do you know any children's toys? <laughs> I don't know that I do. I. You know what? I. I think that. Uh, I think that it's. 
it's a it's a it's made of not gold necessarily but it's some sort of metallic it's it's got lots of hinges and pins and a lot of like gears and mechanisms and it's very complex um it it starts off as like it's it's a but it's a, a figurine of like a horse-drawn carriage that transforms into a giant dragon it's a transformer it's a transformer <laughs> It starts off as a carriage and it transforms to a dragon. <laughs> it's very cool. I feel like this is going to be bad at some point. It's just, you know, it's, it's, a, but it's, it's full of like lots of gears and like, and like hinges and pins that are super complex to be made of metal. And oh, yeah. It's now, a, it's, until Tom takes it. So he throws it against the wall. Yeah. Johnny's a magic toy. <laughs> yeah. It's this super sophisticated toy. It's probably cursed. <laughs> Not with a 27. Uh, I was kind of hoping you'd roll a 95 because that's just a petrified mouse. And that would have been <laughs> this, this little mouse. Well, let's, let's see if it could have been. Oh, oh, no. 84? Oh. <laughs> a receipt of a deposit at a bank from a far flung city. <laughs> I mean, I loved my coupons. Maybe I would like a receipt. You can play banker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's my old bar checkbook. That's what you get. There we go. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like we need to roll off this table if we all at last minute get Toph birthday presents. We need to see how terrible we all are at getting Toph gifts. What's that? that is, I, can't see this. I am perfectly fine with a Toph <laughs> birthday. There's a roll of quarters and some lint. <laughs> some lint. There's, oh my god. There's incredible and then pairs of old socks on here. Like it's. <laughs> I'm very yeah, so he, he finds the he finds the the toy <clears throat> that for Toff, you know, not really under, knowing if it's uh, a toy. I mean, it looks like a toy, but some sort of thing. And, you know, it's not really great. So he's just going to grab it. And uh, I think on the way out, um, having having gotten the materials and, and found an item that may or may not be of value to him later, uh, I think that he's going to use his uh his gravity powers kind of looking around even though he had to swim here and everything just as an extra measure of protection uh using the the gravity powers he has to move some rocks in front of that cave to to kind of obscure the entrance a bit yeah just as a just as a secondary security even more difficult to get back than what it was already at. You're you would be now at a adventures DC of somewhere around a 24 from where you're at. So an incredible difficult for anyone that wasn't uh both in the know, in the possession of a map, and of your skill set. Just in case, because if you know, if what's his face can come up with a map, then anybody can. Not wrong. Biddy. Ah. You got a little time to think about this tome if you didn't exactly know what was in it yet. <laughs> Back inside the latter part of your week. Holding that tome in your hand as it has jumped towards. Ooh. Um. I didn't take it. I don't think you took it. I. It seems to have taken you. Did she drop it? And certainly try. What would I roll for that? Slide of hand. Okay. 14. You try, but it sticks to your hands. I, I, um, I can't let it go. Is that <laughs> normal? No, uh, it flips to a page. Uh, if you have an idea of what this is, you may send it to me in a DM. If you don't, you 
could also send that to me a DM. This is your choice. As we have not discussed. Okay. As that page opens up and it's very Arthurian. There's an illustration on one side and text that fill the other. And it's just as ornate as the language that's in the front. What languages do you know? She knows uh, common, gnomish, undercommon, and draconic. Okay. Oh, uh, I can, I, uh, I see why you may have had difficulty with this. It's, uh, it's just, this is Sylvan. Oh, unfortunately, I never learned that. And as this book begins sprawling the text out towards you, the illustration begins to come to life. As it's set. Something's wrong with the book. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's fine. Just. I just didn't dance last time I had this. <laughs> well, things have certainly changed, haven't they? <sighs> Obviously. She's still trying to just shake this book off her hands and she can't. You just hear doing this with the book. No, no. Oh, 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 it's like it's sticky. <laughs> yes. What if I have to scratch my nose? Will you scratch my nose? <laughs> What's uh, uh, scratch my nose. Right there. Right there. Right nostril. It's very itchy. Persuasion check. <laughs> Make an assessment. <laughs> That's 14. <laughs> Fine, if it'll get you to stop shaking. Just quickly, just right, th right around the, no, no, like a little bit closer, uh, closer to the nostril. Don't pick the nose. Uh, sorry, you're, you're, think, think, you're oh, quite okay. tall. And he, and he pulls over a small stool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, the itch is gone. You're right. It's difficult being up here sometimes. Because now that he has his stool propped up, he can properly like see all the way over. Here, not it's now. It's it, no, please settle. I don't mind. I will help with your comprehension. You know, whenever you put it like that, it doesn't make me sound very intelligent. Uh, you comprehend things just fine. I will unlock your inner potential to see the beauty of this tome. Is that better? Better, better, better words. It's still poor to live. And anyway, no, yes. Watch out, this might itch your nose just a little bit. <laughs> As he <laughs> casts comprehend languages. <laughs> and it does, it's like, just, just for a second, it's like, mm, just a little nostril. Because <laughs> he focuses it right up there on the nose, right where it was going to scratch. Thank you. I appreciate it. She's going to look down at the pages. And you stare back down at this lavish tome from the past. When was the last time that you saw this? And under the what circumstance? <laughs> the last time that Biddy had this was on the same night that Betty was killed because atop their horse was a saddle and in a bag laying over that saddle was this book. So she's been searching for it since. This is a tome of the Feywild. Anything interesting? Oh, very. You see, uh, the, the page that it's opened up to, well, it's, it 
it's about the ins and outs. Go you can on. see on the page, there's a small illustrated version of you that appears walking down a pathway. And it leads oh. towards a tree line. And as you put your hands up on the small trees on the touch of the bark, you can see the forest begin to open up. You see that? I mean, yes, I see it, but it's I'm glad I'm not the only one. More or less a, a guide. Uh, tomes like these, they don't allow you to read them from page one to the end. They show you what you need to see. So want me to go to this place? I don't know. Apparently you have business inside the Fae. Oh, great. As you learn a version of the spell Tree Stride. Tree Stride <laughs> allows you to move fast through actual woods. It's like stepping into a tree and appearing 500 feet away at another tree. However, with this tome, you're able to step in to a portal into the Feywild if you choose. Is there any knowledge about in this book about returning? <laughs> you make the assumption that the process works the same way. This makes me very confident, but thank you. <laughs> and it takes you back to that day. And you realize why you've been searching for so long. Whoever was behind the death of your sister hasn't been on this material plane since that day. And tell that this is a sign of unfinished business and an opportunity if you were to pursue it and just as quickly as the moment comes the book <laughs> folds itself over and closes in your hands um uh, you saw that right <laughs> couldn't miss it uh, uh, how did you come across this book Let me go see my receipts. Uh, a lot of things come and go. Or... She opens it up on the inside with a ledger, very library, old school library style of who has possessed the book before. Is blank on the inside. Says it invisible ink. I can promise you that anything that is crossed here has been properly accounted for. Where would you get this? I don't. I'm not sure. Maybe they have misplaced. He can't. He tries to open it up to another page. Go to the back. Blast it. Well, one thing I've learned is. Home is no good to me. No kidding. And she's going to kind of tuck it under her arm. <sighs> going to check it out or something. To be fair, I'm not returning it, but <sighs> to get money or anything like I that, don't, I can pay. I don't want money. What do you want? I want what's more important. Morton? 
I want the story. Stop by sometime. I hope it gives you the answers that you seek. For all. I, I'll keep that in mind. That Thank is all you. what we are after, isn't it? I have certainly have a story for today. It's true. The guys down by the harbor would probably love it. They'd eat it up. <laughs> Ruffians down by the harbor. <laughs> Let's get them really drunk. They'll tell you silly stories. So yours won't sound <laughs> that wild. <laughs> Not my type. All right. What I just need some banter. I do like a crispy fish dinner, though. <laughs> Go. Maybe, maybe, maybe another time. I have to go back and look at these receipts. I, uh, please, if, uh, and if you find anything as well, um, I don't know if there's a way to contact me, but just keep that information on you. Where are you staying? Don't mind me asking. I can send pigeon. I'm staying down the road. <laughs> What's <place> called? <laughs> oh, no. Yes, the the loft down the road. That's uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It kind of looks the same as the bunghole back in... Oh, sorry. God, the bunghole. Of course it looks the same uh, as the bunghole. It looks hole. better than the rich. We can it's describe the it. It's a bunghole, okay? The, the bungholio. Uh -huh. There's at least like two pools or something. <laughs> at least two. It's got like a... It's got the accent a Q on the E. <laughs> bunghole one. Day. <laughs> day. Did, you, did you say the ox... The accented Q? Accented a Q. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you put an accent on the accent. Great. Uh, Got it. I do take care of. Try not to damage it in, in, in any way. Don't throw it. Or... Let's be real. This thing is already old and beaten. I don't know that there's much more I can do to it. Oh, you wouldn't be surprised. Please do be careful. Yeah, I. Careful's my middle name. Biddy Careful Dolph Food. Have a good one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Good to see you. As he sneezes in the dust that's been kicked up. She shuts the door behind her, just like. I, they are strange, and starts walking down. <laughs> Headed back. Xanarin. There's a, there's a lot about that day that seems as clear as anything else in my mind. But there are pieces too that, like the harder I try to think, the cloudier they get. I was but a young broodling, fresh, fresh of creation, but hungry. I remember that hunger. I was with the rest of the pack. It's, but not the same. How so? I was held to the back. I, I was told to do the exact opposite of what you and the rest of your friends entrusted me to do. I, I was not in the front. I, I was in the back, always watching, seeing if anything else was looming over us. I guess in hindsight, the first to be left to ambush if we were to ambush. Mm. That day, I, I remember the feathers. I remember them tossed about. What I was 
was not allowed to make a kill. Too young still. As they torn apart through those caves. I remember seeing them as almost something divine. I had never seen such splendor. I'm still so young myself. I just want you to know that I did no killing that day. But if I had been asked to, this it would be a different conversation. If, do you know why I asked you the question I did on the day in the cave with Draxus? No, I do not. I, I needed to understand why you had decided to serve me after the death of the Broodmaster. And the moment when you told me that you didn't have a will of your own, that you were subject to the rest of the brood, that was the moment in which I realized that you couldn't truly have had blame laid in front of you for any of this. We all make choices, but sometimes choices are also made for us. For you as a broodling, it would have been an existence where someone only made choices for you. I can't blame you for that. Do you blame the weapon that sits in your hand for the kill it makes? Your axe is not the one that takes a life. You are. You choose to swing it. The sinews of your arm will deal the killing blow. The blade merely sings and strikes where you deem it necessary. doesn't make to... me feel any less guilt as you've described it. I still feel this. To the moment that we changed planes and I no longer step foot and the endless sands brought into this world. The Endless Sands. Is that... Hmm. Reginald, I don't suppose... Uh, it's a slim chance, perhaps, I'm not sure, but do you remember climbing? To reach the nest? Oh. I know it's climbing. Hmm. Then it is likely you found it. A great overhang of rock spire hiving with all sorts of different nests and she's smarter than that we'll start there when we get the chance and I know for a fact that she's surrounded by some of the smartest Twashala scouts they would have seen this coming if they were worth half their salt and some must have got it out. She would have been with them. She must have been. I just hope... I... Lord knows what became of Uri, but... Ah, smart little one. It's not impossible, but we will find them. I've been looking... I know a few ways back. When the time is right, I, I want to tell the others and pose the question to them, but there's a, there's a few different crossings we could use. I, I don't know how best to put it to them, though. The journey is always perilous, and the places you have to go to in order to get to the Shadowfell, crossings are built on places of pain. And the one that I know best? It's no place that I would make someone willingly choose to go to. I don't know how many of them come with me. I don't... I can't promise them riches, I, I, even though we have them. I, there's nothing there that 
many of them might potentially want. It is a dark and inhospitable place, and it's an entirely selfish reason for me to be going. They gain nothing. They, they stand to gain nothing. I, I don't know how best to put it. <clears throat> they end up risking their lives for all of this. After they've all come so far, I, I don't know if I can ask that of them. And I know I have to go, and I, I know that you would go, but I don't know about anyone else. Let me help you for a change. As he leans his dragonborn head over, that amethyst crown floating around over his head. And he leans in just to touch forehead to forehead with you. Do you accept? Oh, I, I accept. I implicitly take a moment to sort of see what's going on, but when the gesture has been made, I follow suit. As he begins casting ceremony. And when you open your eyes as the cold amethyst hits your forehead, you can feel that rush of cold air through the caverns. And your hands on the structure for the first time peering back into home. And you can see the still frame of the Broodmaster and its legion tearing through a surprise section of the nest. And while it's hard to pick out individual pieces, because the feathers are everywhere. You see something in a manifestation for the first time. As you've circled around waiting, this anticipation of looking at this in a three-dimensional way, as if your body has been lifted out circling this scene from back from Reginald's position in the front of the cave staring out to looking towards what else is here and you can see the physical body of your sister but it's back behind the feathers. And you can see her concentrating on something. She's held in a position of ceremony as well, floating slightly off of the ground. And back behind as you continue to rotate there is a projection of her as well. And for the first time, you see the separation of psionic soul between body. And those visions that you had of a long departed island far away with part of your family and distinctively your sister as that you know while she has left her physical body she chose by psionic soul and is still there some place that you have never known about another separate piece of of what makes your people so different than the rest that resides on your plane. 
They reside in your true home, far from your physical body and existence inside those caves. As you open up your eyes, something that even Reggie doesn't comprehend. I hope this brings some kind of clarity. Not clarity, but I, it, it's an answer. And whatever that place is, I need to try and reach out and find it. I saw it. In the moments where the Broodmaster pulled all the life from me, I, I saw it. And she reached back to me and told me that it wasn't my time yet. I don't know what that bygone place is, but... Whoever we'll find is it. there... We'll yeah. find it together. Damn right we will. I have so many questions. There's a thousand different things that could have... could have happened. I still don't understand. You need to know. I understand next to nothing. The initiations that all of my line of the cadre go through, my twin and I never got that far. I still don't understand much of this. Our talent was not the same as other Kadetha. We never, we never got to that place. We were always different. So there are going to be things that we both see that I don't understand. We're going to have to discover this together. Welcome to my world, my friend. I suppose that's a little something we have in common. You will learn on the fly. Mm. As I will learn to wait, even if this roast duck is impeccable. You know, even as you learn and grow, some things you should never change there, Reggie. I'm still very hungry. <laughs> Looking into the psychic veil is hungry work. Maybe I can study more on this when time goes on. I, there's a lot to unpack here. Hmm. Wonder if I'll be able to access my own ceremony at some point. figure out the rest of this from there. But knowing that she's out there, even if it's not quite how I anticipated, that's... that's a better start than I was hoping for. Leads us to an entirely different direction, perhaps. With this shared moment with Reggie, you've unlocked aura of purity for him. A fourth level spell that you can use to where folks within the 30 foot radius cannot become diseased and have resistance to poison damage and advantage on saving throws that may cause blind, charm, deafen, frighten, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned. As the rest of your meal begins pouring out, so do one by one the rest of your friends meaning back up top Nelson in a very fancy new cloak Toph, Jacob Biddy and Brom all come back to the same spot for dinner for the first time in a week Well, if I knew we were going to start drinking, I would have arrived here earlier. I 
what you're drinking late. already. Okay. Time to catch up, Brom, honestly. I'm going to yeah. shove a mug of ale that we had spare over in his direction. Ah, my man! See, I knew. Ha! You can try to take claim, but I know this is my man Reginald's doing here. Yeah, sort of look at the waiter, a waiter behind you, and I'm just going to make the indication of like, hey, like, one more. And just them to bring over more. Reggie holds up his hand. Six, please. Six. I would like a glass of milk. Mm. One glass of milk, please. Or orange juice. Or orange juice. Nelson's yeah. very confused. Wait, why are we sitting down here? You know we have a room in the... We have a private room in We're the VIP. We're social, obviously. Plus, then we get to see people. Nelson, did you buy a private room? Um, <laughs> people of Waterdeep have been very generous. I'm going to be looking at his robes and... Uh, maybe his immaculate manicure and pedicure and and the bling that he has i'm gonna say what else did you buy <laughs> this is just an experiment did you get anything for us you can get whatever you'd like you Please. can also get whatever you'd like for us yeah And he snaps his fingers and then like one of his, uh, I don't know, elves in waiting, like a very tall, <laughs> chiseled, sexy <laughs> surf elf smell. comes over. Oh and, like, you uh, have retainers. Over, uh, 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 like a like a like a gilded KFC <laughs> bucket of assorted <laughs> bugs. <laughs> gilded bugs. <laughs> perfect. KFC well then, perfect. Bucket. He takes it from him and slaps it down on the table, then fist! <laughs> oh, <laughs> you so kind. I will uh, happily and eagerly take one and crunch down on it. If there is a dead scorpion, I have tried those before and I shall gingerly grab one and try those again. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, you know, uh, boss, I think, uh. Mm, mm, Gonna, he, Brom's gonna try one anyway. I imagine Reggie has zero fucking qualms because he does not think this is irregular food. Oh, he doesn't full. understand. Oh, <laughs> this is protein. Full handful. Oh, God. Oh, what did you get so oh, brave? What? When did you get so brave? Oh, bro. oh, brave. I mean, I'm, of course, no, I'm got, yeah, but you take that well, wrong. Of course, no, I'm, I'm, last time. What changed? I'm, it's gold. I have. Try not to be rude. I don't know. This, I'm, I'm sorry. This hat's got me feeling different. He kind of does a little jig. Hat. <laughs> it's the hat. <laughs> so run just about gulps down the scorpion again, remembering the taste, the mm. texture. It, it's better than it was, but it's still, yeah, it's still growing on him slowly. A gold leafing doesn't help. It doesn't change it at all. Oh. I'm Tom chopped you at least 20 times before you swallow. Oh, this is like a you bad cherry tomato that. on a salad. Once it goes squished, you can't take it back. It's better for digestion. Oh, ale, You're doing please. great. Well, if you have one. No. You pick some one of the bugs. She'll oh. smack it out of your hand. <laughs> Slide of hand versus slide of hand. Airplane's coming. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh good, mine's zero. Sweet. Oh. No, stop it. She's gonna chomp it and bite your finger at the same time. <laughs> and spit it out. <laughs> But you just get the head. Don't do that. Oh, don't bet it anyway. Squish. Ah, made oh, mango yeah, squish. Out. Oh, God. The only thing I bit was your finger, which is disgusting. Wash those. He wipes it on you. Excuse you. Sorry, I was trying to find a napkin. Pick, she's going to pick a handful <laughs> of pots and, like, squish it on him. <laughs> And he, he, Not like that. Blindsided, it just 
it squishes in and it's just this gold leafing that looks like the front of a windshield after you've been driving on the highway for a couple of hours in the summer just as it drains down into my beard I look see the up to you wisdom saving throw oh no what's he what you or just me or he thinks about shaking like a wet dog right now and sending these squish bugs everywhere do he it. composes himself and he goes over to the, <laughs> the side of the building, just does a little you press digitation. Art. Are you okay? He spins around while he's still cleaning it off. You are lucky that there are people here. If there was a private. Oh, that sucks so bad that you just can't stick up for yourself long enough. It's fine. Uh, Brom, you. You, you missed a spot just, just like there in the bit so I'll let you get to it I think Gwen's still crawling gross could it be me he snaps his fingers I need you to roll a perception check Biddy alright Uh oh. Rest of digitation shit posts. Here we come. Yep. <laughs> As he cast minor illusion uh -oh. <laughs> of a bridesmaid sash over your back. <laughs> what? What's the you don't. Thing? You what? don't. Even, you don't even see it. I don't know you, it. you don't. You don't know no, it's I, there. Don't I feel it? <laughs> no, it's just the. It is just the back. <laughs> over the over the course of every gentleman coming up to you, so uh, <laughs> big weekend is it? Uh, couple of uh the himbo retainers that Nelson has. Helps in waiting. <laughs> I know that we're on business here, but I couldn't help but notice that it's a big weekend for you. Uh, we go get a couple of shots. Uh. I mean, I'm always down for shots, but... Oh, what the... Are you winding me up? <sighs> but it's... Your party, we're just living in it. Oh my god, what? As the fireball shots begin to loom in. <laughs> as there is no waking moment where you're not pursued by some potential quarter. <laughs> excuse, excuse me a moment and she's gonna walk back to her group what the hell is going on everyone else can see the sash <laughs> oh boy here we go uh, couldn't say no idea do you want another bug <laughs> what? I don't know man but no, if they're offering like... shots get me one you know you <laughs> I imagine you drink them under the table. I'm so sorry. If I'd succeeded on that wisdom save, I would have told you. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> what is it? I can tell you're lying through your teeth, even though half your face isn't missing this time. You, you, you don't know me. <laughs> Jacob! Uh, what? Oh, so that's your I didn't name. do it, bro. So I do know you. You answered to it. What is going on? A ask him as he's pointing over a bro. <laughs> Reginald looks up and looks over at Xanarin. Xanarin, what is a bridesmaid? <laughs> bridesmaid? Um, at that point, to read. I, at that point, yeah, Xanarin is, uh, Xanarin has burst out laughing slightly as well. Um, oh, Reggie. Uh, I'll I'll explain that one to you when you're. Hmm. Why are there so many people around our table? Are they trying to take our food? Just <laughs> reaches for his axe, very concerned that there may be people taking hors d'oeuvres off the table. No, 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 Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. No, no, no. 
And if they're hors d'oeuvres, everyone is welcome to them. That's the entire idea of an hors d'oeuvre. Everyone gets one. Uh, he's gonna um, step off to the side and summon her echo because her echo reflects what she's wearing. <laughs> oh, that's so hot! <laughs> so the best like, use. What? Bro, Rob's too late. He's like, he's like, oh, 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 oh. it just comes out as a bunch of dwarven gibberish. As you try to change your minor illusion, can I cast my minor illusion to change it back to what it was originally? Oh, I can't even get mine off. Like you just, you further, <laughs> you further prevent any kind of <laughs> attempt. <laughs> oh. Benny's gonna cast minor illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. Good choice. This so, time on cantrip wars. <laughs> so you'll you'll have to do perception to see if you notice what she's gonna do or what she does. Oh, with this, with him, uh, definitely gonna be disadvantage on this because he's he's already. I'm already bumbling over myself. Good Fifteen. Job. Okay. <laughs> So I've seen she, you. I've seen you do something, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so like down next to her side, she's also gonna kind of snap, and on your back shows a sign that says, "Kick me." Jacob kicks you. Ow! Really hard. Ow! Gravity <laughs> kick. What like sign was it needed for that to happen? Gravity What's kick. Oh my God. My ass! That's the problem! Right. <laughs> Why do you have to grab any kick Sorry, didn't have a choice. Oh god, it feels like I'm... Everything's been reversed in my gut! <laughs> I'm gonna put my arm around Reggie, and I'm just gonna do the kind of like, the, the, the like, bro thing of like, arm around pointing, being like, So Reginald, today we're gonna learn about signs. You know? It's just... <laughs> do you know what a sign is, Reggie? Yeah! Reginald goes in for a gravity kick of his own. Boo hoo! Sucks, doesn't it? Give me a shot the fireball, please. Next time you just won't even know, but I'm gonna rearrange your teeth. He she comes up and kicks you. Ah, 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 ah. Would somebody let me down from this gravity? He's, he's currently suspended and just kind of circling in this gravity With kick. Pinata, everybody kick it! Uh, just levitating you inches off the candy. ground. Yeah. <laughs> Already has candy inside him. Uh, turn me into a human. There's pinata. candy. Oh, 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 Swift kick in the shins. <laughs> Not a bunny kick. Ow. Today on Meet Your When does the candy come out? You gotta kick hard. <laughs> oh, Rom, I have to kick you again, and then he's gonna kick you one more time. In the, <laughs> the moment that you make contact with this thing, it is perfect, and you hear candy just. Fireworks explode when you do. Oh. oh. <laughs> is Brahm is held there. <laughs> As you can see, the sparks and the flames off in the distance. As you can see, one of the large towers outside the actual castle walls suspend itself up in a gravity explosion son of a bitch we feel this right we don't really see it oh yeah it's like a concussion on your chest but he's gonna look at Brom for a second and realize it's not him and kind of <sighs> pull him upright. Uh, <sighs> look over there. Oh, brother. <coughs> well, so much for vacationing. 
as you see that tower mm -hmm. reversing itself before a second explosion. And that is where we will pick up next week. Well, 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 here we go. That was a really like fun session. I really I like the pinata bra. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, went I was going with kick day. me first and then I changed it. <laughs> I wish you would have because then I could have fought. <laughs> she was ready for it. Yeah, I'm always ready to wind it up. By the way, People when the explosion happens, uh, mm -hmm. Jacob just drops you on the floor. <laughs> I'm uh, only a few inches off, okay? I can catch it. I catch it. I can use I can use violent attraction to slam me down. <laughs> My ass is still sore. <laughs> Biddy pulls me up off the ground when she does it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not rubbing it. Yeah, I told you, give me one of your shots. <laughs> Fine. She gives you a shot, and then we should probably figure out what's going on again. I look over at one of the himbos and go. Get over it! It's not, it's not, it's not a bachelorette party, it's not a bridesmaid. Go! Bah. As he gets protective of this dude that's been looming over you for a while. Go! Go go, go get Xander and some more mimosas. She's gonna kind of like yell off whisperedly, but also you can tell that her voice is carrying. I only like Celestials. <laughs> picky, picky. Come back when you're better. <laughs> More mimosas, please. <laughs> <laughs> I just we named this guy Joe. We had I'm sorry. <laughs> Planetars are bust. <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Been enlightened. <laughs> hey. Booyah. That was a great episode back. That was so oh, cool. That's so good to have the gang back together. Very good all around. Yeah. Oh. Also, good job, Glam. Yeah. Your mind's eye? Mind's eye? Uh, Dude, yeah. let's go. And then surprised us with a switch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I wanted to sneak it into my thing, but I knew that Robert probably had things timed, so I didn't want to, like, go too wild. Oh, it was Dude. so good. Oh, chef's kiss. I love it so much. I love uh, distinctively all of your characters. I like, I, I enjoy that very much about what they would do. What they would roam and do. <laughs> that was a really cool concept. It's really nice to see more of the characters outside of just battling. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's very and cool. hunting stuff. Yeah. I said it in the break while you weren't here, Robert, but I I'm so glad that we did our tales from Ba Sing Se episode. That's a uh, that makes me very very happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is always some of my favorite with these characters, just to sit and witness RP generally and uh yeah a whole however many hours of that goodness is something that i'm absolutely down for. <laughs> always never enough time never uh, never oh. guess we'll have to uh pick the lock on that box <laughs> hopefully with the highest dc no <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah. thanks a lot Ugh. i mean look listen all i'm gonna say is it would have worked just fine if your mom hadn't Put a foot down and been like, no. Oh, sure. Blame my mom. He's only just trying <laughs> to look my out mom. for me. Look, listen, that was the only not one. I'm just saying. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Your that mom's was not going to yourself. <laughs> you, I didn't have you, to roll it, but I did. Yeah, you didn't have to roll that either. <laughs> I know. I just thought, like, yeah. Because she didn't, she purposely didn't teach him. I'm going to enjoy rewatching the little bits of the session, and I'm going to enjoy the moment where I see that you've rolled and I cut off whatever I was saying and be like, oh god, what happened? I know, sorry. <laughs> there was the cracking sound too from my dice rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. I've learned to fear that, that weird squiggly one on your dice. It, <clears throat> it, it is a portent of doom. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so teacher. good. Doom and parties. <laughs> Join us good, next good. week. We'll be there for y'all. Much love. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>